right, seeing us out of time is 7.01. I will call to order the Thursday, June 10th edition of the Norton Select Board meeting. Let the record show that at present, three members of the board are present. Uh, myself, Michael Tool, and Kristen DeVoe. Um, Meg Arts may be joining us shortly. I do not expect Renee to be joining us tonight. Uh, also joining us are, is town manager, Michael Units. And uh, I'm going to try to share the agenda packets. So we can all kind of follow along at home. Um, first things first, we have the uh, public comment period. So anybody out there have uh, anything that they would like to share with us this evening? I see uh, Rob Walsh has his hand up. So Rob, why uh, don't you take two or three minutes and, and share? Okay, can you hear me? I'm clear, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to do is read a letter that I apologize I was uh, misread the notice last week and didn't get in, to, in time to do it. So um, here it is. Uh, to Town of Mort Norton, Board of Selectmen. Dear board members, I think we all know about the piece of case at this point, but I would like to look past that in a larger issue that the piece of case itself is merely one of the symptoms of. This would be the long-term pattern of inconsistent and arbitrary application of our conservation rules. A pattern like this hurts all of Norton for how it contributes to our long-term and ongoing frustration with the challenge of attracting business to Norton. In short, this is costing us money. It's difficult to propose a complete answer to that in just a letter. I think the why of it is a complicated question that really needs a group assembled and tasked to do a full analysis. This group should look at our laws and make sure they're well enough defined so as to not invite arbitrary or inconsistent application. And in addition, they should also look into how these laws are being applied in a review across the number of situations and cases over time that certainly do but overall give the appearance that the application is indeed inconsistent and very arbitrary. And the reasons for that pattern be dug into. I ask that this group should at the very least define methods of transparency and oversight. CONCOM does need to be able to operate and do it, and legitimate enforcement has to be unencumbered. To be clear, one factor in all this we can't ever ignore is that without CONCOM, we get run over. It's that simple. We do need to get, we do need done the work they're supposed to be doing, but we have seen extremes that really should have triggered red flags before they got this far. It's clear that oversight is needed. For the immediate action, I would ask for some reporting transparency. We, the town, should be able to see who we are taking to court following the same communication standard applied to making sure we see agendas and minutes in these town meetings. As far as going back to court multiple times, I don't see them appealing something should be a red flag in itself, but certainly somewhere after that before having lost twice and going back to court a third time. There needs to be a trigger for review of what we are up to really here. They should not just be running completely unmanaged as they appear to be. I certainly do have my own observations on the piece of case, but to me it's a side issue. I can only hope the town sees fit to do the right thing on that one. Those observations are certainly what led to me to doing the research, but it's not what prompted this letter. My focus here is on how this behavior hurts the town. Every business considering coming to Norton is going to research us and see that pattern. They will see the inconsistency. They will see the arbitrary decision making can even include destroying a resident over an agenda that's clearly not about conservation. It speaks to court prioritization of play in that decision making. Consider that from the perspective of someone evaluating business risk and coming here. When I asked around to see how the towns proceed, I heard things like moving targets from several different sources. And those words inconsistent and arbitrary were coming up a lot too. On one hand, that's all hearsay, so no single account carried much weight with me. But I heard enough of it and the similarity from different sources. Plus, it's what I thought I saw in my reading, too. So that looks like we are known for this, and that hurts us. We should definitely be tough, but fair and consistent and known for that, too. Anything else, and especially what we have now, is too much of a red flag for us to be waiting at folks looking for a town to take their business. When someone is considering where to invest, they evaluate risk and it weighs very heavily into what they decide. If one town has a history of being an adventure to deal with, and other near a towns have a rep for being at least fair, and regardless how tough, it's nothing personal, but that one town is out. 
I'm asking you, the selectmen, to get involved here and please help us stop being that town. That's it. Uh, thank you, Rob. Appreciate you uh, reading that. I know you shared that uh, with the board previously and, and online. Uh, anybody would like to respond to that? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I guess I'll save my comments to when we we have uh, the Paisa situation up because I have very similar feelings to to Mr. Welsh that there's an uh, alarming, I, if this comments build up, there are alarming things of inconsistencies with how we're applying conservation laws. Um, and well, I'm not probably as versed as, 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 as some in the conservation thing. There are some of the feedback I'm getting it makes me very concerned, but I'll, I'll, I'll reserve my comments further for later. Is, it, is there a spot later in this meeting that's going to be talking to that? We will, uh, the PAYS has had discussion regarding the PAYS's letter um, to the board. Um, there is on the open agenda. Oh, okay. I missed that. I apologize. Thank, thank you, and I appreciate your feedback and, and your outlook on it. Uh, Mike, one one concrete point that Rob raised was um, access to information about any uh, legal case that the town is involved in. Is that information publicly available? Um, if not, can we make it so? Or and if it's not possible, um, why not? Um, yeah, I'll check with com legal counsel on that for you. Okay. If we can have an update on that for our sure. next meeting. Because I agree, I think it would be helpful to at least understand where where the town is involved in, in a variety of legal cases. I think sharing that information does not betray any sort of um, ongoing matters within the courts. I, I would say understand if you haven't filed something yet, if you want to keep your thoughts private, that's certainly understandable. But you know, what do we have filed that's actually out there in the system would be the question. I think, I think once things are filed, it becomes a matter of public record, so it should be something that is, um, that yeah. is accessible. It's just making it easy. So. Okay. Uh, and then, and then uh, just, you know, I did in the interest of transparency, because some of you did give me some instructions on how to request information. I have followed that, but as of yet, not heard anything back. Um, okay. keep, me, keep me in the loop if uh, you continue to, to not get anything back, Rob, and I'll see what I can do to help out. Okay, thank um, you. All right. I'm done. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I see Christopher Keyes uh, calling in from Golden Gate Bridge, looks like. Beautiful. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, my, my comments are just in a general sense. Uh, as you probably know, I've been poking in on some meetings uh, on Zoom over the last few months, uh, now being retired. Um, I just want to make a general comment to say how impressed I am with the professionalism of the, the select board as well as all the boards uh, that, I, that I've uh, observed. Uh, the commitment that all of you make uh, to serving your community is laudable. Um, and I'm just so impressed with, with the way that the town is being run at this point in time. I'm excited about the future of this community. Um, with, with the exciting vote from, from the uh, May 8th town meeting. Um, and I think that uh, nothing is ever perfect in this world, but, but I, I feel like everybody has, has a true intention to get getting things right on this board. And I thank you for your service. Well, thank you very much, sir. I, have a, I tend to have an allergic reaction to positive feedback, so I, I will kind of acknowledge that and thank you very much for that and uh, on behalf of the board I mean uh, I agree I think we have uh, some really good members here doing some good things across uh, not just the select board but uh, across there so I share your enthusiasm and, and thank you for saying so thank you I'll get you a Benadryl thank you uh, don't let, let's wait a little bit because I'll fall asleep and, uh, Mr. 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 Chairman I, uh, I, I... I was uh, actually taken back by the compliments, and, and we appreciate them. I, but I was always expecting the butt. <laughs> I, was, I was like, where's, where's the butt? <laughs> no, but we appreciate the kind words. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I, agree you with, I agree with what Mr. Key said. Thank you to Jack and the Select Board and Ms. Town Manager Units and all that. Boards on the town for keeping this town good and Positive results are coming with the May 8th vote, and it's all looking great for the future of the town of Norton and the Army Mayor Norton, Peter J. Williams, as I 
resume my busy lifestyle from this pandemic. Excellent. That's great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't see anyone else, so uh, at this point we will close the public comment. Uh, as always, if anything comes up as we're going through, uh, feel free to raise your hand. We'll do our best to, to get you in the, in the normal flow of the discussion. Uh, that brings us to uh, appointments, resignations, or retirements. We do have the resignation of Robin Lovering from the Council on Aging. Um, Mike, anything special there? We need a motion to recognize. Yeah, Robin uh, has been a volunteer for a number of years and I uh, really do appreciate all the service that she's given to the town. Excellent. Well, Robin, thank you very much for, for all you've done and um, wish you best. So, Chair, I'm taking a motion to accept the resignation of Robin Lovering from the Council on Aging. So Chuck, I'm not, Chuck, is it something that I don't I don't think resignate? Do we vote on resignations? I think we have to accept them. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think so. It's always what? better to get it and then not need it. Yeah, it's better. You should. Okay. Yeah, okay. A motion from Meg and a second from Christine. Thank you. I'll let the record show that um, Meg Arts has joined. Thank you, Meg. Welcome. Uh, all right. Seeing no further discussion, we'll go to the vote. Uh, Meg. Uh, yes. Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. And I to am a yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that closes that off. On to licenses and permits. There is a vote to amend the one day all alcohol liquor license to Lisa Johnston for a private event at Everbundle Park from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. by changing the date of the event from Saturday, June 19th to Saturday, July 3rd. Uh, Trying to see if I can. Get there. Is that all there is, Mike? I'm assuming everything else has been uh, signed yep. off on by the, uh, the folks there. Yeah, right. just just to change a date. Okay. Uh, so, Chair, I entertain a motion to approve the amended application for a one day liquor license, adjusting the date from uh, Saturday, June 19th to Saturday, July 3rd. All other items to remain the same. So moved. All right, I think we got three motions in three seconds, so we're coming here. <laughs> uh, we'll go to the vote. Meg? Yes. Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. And I too am a yes. All right, thank you very much. Uh, pardon me one moment. My daughter is trying to show me some sharp teeth, and she's picking an interesting time to try to do that. <laughs> and I'm in the meantime, may I ask a question in regards to these um, licenses, if you don't mind? Please do. Um, Thank you, Chris. I'm sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll drag the attention away. Um, so where it says, like, to, is liquor to be sold or dispensed, um, for this particular one, it's no, non-glass items. I totally respect that. Um, but who is responsible for enforcing that, or is it just an honor system? We, we do have um, people from recreation. There's always someone there at the event. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else on this? It's a good question, Christine. Thank you. Uh, in the case anyone at home is wondering, sharp teeth, very sharp. Uh, we'll poke on my, uh, my thumb from that. All right. Uh, that brings us to announcements. So Christine, I don't know if you want to run through. We have at least three today. Yeah, we actually have a couple more that I wanted to add, but was a little late for it. Okay, so let me just grab them. Okay, so first one is that lifeguards are needed at Everett Leonard Park. Um, so the town of Norton needs lifeguards. Applications are on our website at nortonma.org. Um, it's not too late to get trained. If you need help finding a course, email mtowle at nortonmaus.com. And I do know you need to be 16 years or older in order to become a lifeguard. So if anybody's interested, please reach out to Melanie. 
And then the Bristol Elder Services are offering free rides to COVID-19 vaccination appointments. It's open to all age groups and the only eligibility requirements are you need to own a smartphone or cell phone, no access to transportation, able to get to curbside and in and out of vehicle independently. And they must reside in the greater Attleboro, Taunton and Fall River communities. But for folding wheelchairs, walkers and scooters that can be safely and securely fit in the vehicle's trunk or back seat without obstruction, obstructing the driver's view are permitted. And you can reach out to Trish Robertson at 774-301-1984. And that's Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if anybody's um, in need of a ride, please reach out. And then let me just go through. Sorry, I have screenshots and I ended up just getting to pictures. Okay. Um, so then the other one, nine lives craft fair. I'm excited about this. So this is going to be held on June 19th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And this is at 84 Hill Street in Norton. Masks are required. And if you need any more information, please call 508-285-5159. All proceeds are to benefit the kitties who live on, on nine lives. So craft fairs are always a good time for anybody who's never been to one. They are always good things to find. Oh, and Father's Day is coming up. So there you go. That's where you're going to find your gifts. Um, and then we have the National Business Honor Society Car Wash. This is at the Valentine Tool and Stamping parking lot on the 12th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Donations are greatly appreciated, but not required. So if you want to get your car wash, that would be a good time to get it. And then the last thing, which I think is very important to the town, um, the Norton Parks and Rec Department is working on a Concert in the Park series for the summer. Um, thanks in part to a grant from the Norton Cultural Council. It will be Friday evenings at Everett Leonard Park, 6.30 to 8.30 between July 9th and August 13th. And they're looking for musical groups that are family friendly and affordable. And again, you can contact Melanie Powell um, if, you have, if you or someone you know would like to play some music or do any sort of of, I guess, entertainment if they can't find music, but music is more what this is geared towards. Um, so you can reach out to Melanie. It was mpowell at nortonmaus.com. And that's all I have for today. Awesome. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Meg or Michael, do you have anything that you'd like to share? Good. Thank you, Jack. Maybe. Uh, no. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike, just since Nine Lives came up, um, any update on their the whole waste management search for a new potential location for them? Um, I think that that prospect has gone by the wayside. I think uh, they're going to look at something, another option. Okay. All right. Perhaps we can put that on a, on a future meeting and catch up on that. You know, it's not quite uh, under the auspices of a craft fair. I was just curious. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Uh, that brings us to our new business. Uh, first item is the LGBTQ plus pride proclamation. Turn this over to uh, to Michael. I know you've uh, spent a lot of time on this. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just would like to, and I, you know, obviously we've had a very full agenda, and uh, I know I missed. This is something that's dear to me, and I missed the last meeting, so I do apologize that it's coming on the tenth of uh, June, but um, I would like to read and propose to the select board um, to, to approve a proclamation, um, and if I can read it as such. Uh, the Town of Norton Proclamation, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Plus Pride Month, June 2021. Whereas the Town of Norton is a welcoming community and is sexual an exceptional place to live, learn, work, play, and raise a family. And whereas Norton recognizes the importance of equality and freedom, and whereas the nation was founded upon and is guided by a set of principles that include every person has been created equal, it, that each has a right to their life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, 
and that each shall be accorded a full recognition and protection of law. And whereas the town of Norton, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer plus community are a, virtu are a vital part of all fields of professional um, and contribute to strong to a strong community. And whereas the town of Norton is dedicated to fostering acceptance of all its citizens, preventing discrimination and bullying based on sexual orientation and gender identity. And whereas Norton is strengthened uh, by and thrives upon rich diversity in ethnic, cultural, racial, gender, and sexual identities of its residents, all of which contribute to a vibrant character of our town. And whereas the Centers of Deep Disease Control recognizes that L LGBTQ plus teens are at a higher risk to be victims of violence and have increased suicide rates. And whereas it is imperative that young people in the community, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, feel valued, safe, empowered, and supported by their peers, educators, and community leaders. Now, therefore, we, the select board, and on behalf of the town of Norton, hereby proclaim and recognize June 2021 as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Plus Pride Month in the town of Norton, and we recognize the resilience and determination of many individuals who are fighting to live freely and authentically. In doing so, they are opening hearts and minds and laying the foundation for more just and equitable town. And I present this uh, to the select board for approval. Excellent. Thank you, Michael, for preparing that and, and reading it in. Uh, Chair, I'm doing a motion to um, make the proclamation as read by Mr. Cole. I moved. Second. Motion second. Uh, Meg? Yes. Christine? Yes. Michael? An enthusiastic aye. Uh, I as well will be an enthusiastic yes. Um, thank you very much, Michael, for, for putting that forward. Mr. Um, Chairman, one more, one, more, one more point of recognition. Second. Um, I know there were some questions and concerns about uh, possibly having um, flags to recognize Pride Pride Month. Um, what I would recommend right now, obviously because of the short timing of the month, and I know, um, and I can ask uh, the town manager if this might be possible on the communication board that we do put a slide up there recognizing it and, and so forth. And then I would also encourage maybe in the future to open up uh, discussions for next year. Um, just for planning and open up the, the community discussion. Mike, is that something that we can do? I don't know if you've said something, Mike, I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, um, I know Charlene um, will put something up on the uh, message board tomorrow. Okay. Um, I know some communities have uh, the rainbow flag, flag flags um, at their town hall. Is that something that we would be able to do in enough time to have it be impactful? I understand we're getting a, a late jump on the month, but I do think it would send a, a positive message along with the proclamation. I'm not familiar with the flag code. I know that there are some pretty strict rules as to where non-American, um, non-state flags can be. Um, yeah, I'll check into that. Okay. And to Michael's point, I, I think it would make sense at this point to try to work with whether it's um, the Historic District Commission and ourselves or in Parks and Rec on a usage guideline or policy for the common to make sure that um, things aren't done on a case by case basis, that there is a, a formal process that can go through. I know. Um, I think having a, a document to back that up and to, to reference when these things come up allows uh, just better clarity for everyone involved. Mr. Chairman, I, I you know I think the, a bigger discussion with us all and maybe getting some of the stakeholders in place, but we may also um, consider you know there are several months that are recognized as a whole months that we as a, as a select board in a community would want to recognize. So we may look at other options too. Maybe there are a certain number of um, telephone poles in town that have certain banners 
Right now, we obviously are flying flags, but maybe there's other options as well that have, you know, I would love to investigate all the options. I, I agree. I was driving through, I think it was um, one of the Bridgewaters yesterday, and they have a uh, hometown hero uh, banners on their, uh, on their uh, telephone poles. I think that would be really great to see in our town. It's, it's, it's obvious how much this town cares about its veteran community. Um, I think that would be something great, especially for, for Veterans Day, Memorial Day. Uh, lots of yes. opportunities there. Yeah, because when we look at, I mean, specifically, when we look at flagpoles in our towns, um, you know, it, it, we have to have a lot of sensitivity. We, it's funny, we're not, I don't believe we have an individual flagpole in town that isn't part of a memorial. And I could be wrong about that, but I think the majority of them are part of memorials. And not that this, but I think there are, as I say, stakeholders and so forth. I want to make sure that we're not rushing and we're taking sensitivity from everyone and, and making sure that we're, we're investigating it off. Thank you, Michael, for bringing this up and uh, taking the time to draft that. Um, moving on, next would be. Uh, did you vote to declare that? We did. Uh, yeah. and we, a couple enthusiastic yeses and then we Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that was a motion from Meg and a second from Christine. Uh, all right, next up is uh, discuss and or vote to accept the donation from Jason Massey of uh, J. Massey Sign for the graphic work done on the Norton Police Department Special Operations Vehicle. Can you provide some context for us on that, Mike? Yep, so uh, the fire department had a surplus ambulance that they uh, transferred over to the police department for their special operations vehicle. And um, so they had to have the, the graphics done on the vehicle. And when the bill came in uh, for $5,000, it was uh, marked paid. Uh, so we'd like to uh, accept that donation from J. Massey Sign um, and thank them for that work. They did a great job. <clears throat> that's, that's one form and just so kind of them. To do that, um, is there any type, type of uh, formal recognition that we could provide a letter on behalf of the town? Sure, so we'll, we'll, we'll send him a letter. Okay, so the snazzy looking ambulance. Uh, so, Chair, I've seen a motion to accept the donation for the graphics work uh, on behalf of Jay Massey Sign. I moved. Second. Motion and a second. Oh, Meg? Yes. Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. On to a yes. So thank you, Mike. We have now a uh, review and or vote to approve the Norton Public Employee Committee PEC and Town of Norton Agreements. You guide us uh, this. Sure. So if you screw Go to uh, number one, if you can. Yep, yeah, hang on a sec, sir. <laughs> this, uh, the Public Employee Committee is the uh, committee um, that negotiates uh, the health insurance with the town. Uh, this was established when we used uh, section 21 through 22 under uh, Mass General Law 32B to amend our health insurance plan. And this, under number one down the last paragraph, um, this will now allow us to include a, a high deductible plan. And uh, the paragraph above that explains it, I'm sorry. So the town will um, now be allowed to put in a qualified high deductible plan with health savings accounts. Uh, this would be a plan that, you know, someone that's young, could uh, start out with this plan and they can put money away uh, towards any future health uh, expenses they may have. And this, um, even though it's an optional plan, you can't add plans without the unions agreeing to that. So this would uh, allow us to add that plan. And this agreement ends 
June 30th, 2023. All other provisions stay as is. So Mike, were there any other administrative costs that came by adding a, switch, adding a plan and or uh, switching plan? I mean, obviously high deductible plans become very attractive to reduce um, medical costs. Right, it, um, it'll be a savings for us. Uh, so on the uh, individual plan, it's a savings of uh, $1,638 a year and the family plan $3,400 and $83 per year. So per individual, right? Right. Yep. Okay. And then what's the second item here? Um, this, uh, everything else was already in the plan from previously. Um, nothing else changed on that. And does this bring us any savings at all, Mike? Michael, on retirements? I know, I I know, I already know the I, everything in my gut tells me no, but this doesn't no. bring any any right. no. retirements. Right. Um, well, everyone that retires has to go on if they're sixty-five. They have to go on Medicare. Uh, well, Medicaid. I get those two mixed up. <laughs> Medicare, Medicaid is, is yeah. No, <laughs> so they go on Medicare, but it would help you if someone retires. Um, and it's on this plan before they are 65. So if someone retires at 55, it saves you 10 years of expense. Any further questions on this? And uh, all unions have agreed and signed off. My only tidbit is page three, section six, line four. Um, this is kind of something I want to work on getting in unison. I don't know if it's possible now. Um, I would prefer to read select four rather than select men. Right. Yep. If that's possible to get changed. Um, it's already been. Yeah, no, that can change. Yeah. I'll Thank change you. That. Yep. We are the majority, Mike. What's that? <laughs> we are the majority, to say. <laughs> I wanted to say for obvious reasons, but I didn't know if it was that obvious. So. That, that's <laughs> because obvious. that was something that didn't change. It was in there from the previous agreement. So yeah, we yeah. Check. No worries. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. okay. Any further questions or comments on this? Mr. Chairman, our sisters uh, like to point this out uh, for on a on a frequent basis. That's all uh, <laughs> about the title on the contract. So. Right. But they are the majority. I believe so. Uh, all right. Uh, seeing no further discussion, uh, Chair entertain a motion to approve the uh, PEC amendment as presented. So moved. Second. Okay. Go to the vote. Mike? Yes. Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. And two and yes. Uh, and Christine, you are a ninja with that mute button and coming on and off to get <laughs> everybody else. It's impressive. All right. Uh, thank you for that, Mike. Back here. Next up, item number four, uh, discuss and or a vote to recommend a TIP agreement with Yale clients and approve the submission of the EDIP local incentive only application to the Massachusetts Economic Assistance Coordinating Council. So I believe this is something that came before us uh, a few weeks ago, went back to the EDC, and I believe they have unanimously recommended this revision. Do you want to take us through, Mike? Sure. Um, so as, yep, yeah, as you said, uh, this did go to, um, the economic development committee and, um, we've uh, been negotiating with the company and, um, uh, we've had three or four revisions to, um, uh, their proposal. And, uh, I think we've come up with a proposal that's fair, uh, for them and for us to get, uh, a company in town that will move their headquarters here. 
and I know there's representatives from the company on that would like to speak to it and tell you a little bit about the company. That would be great. I'd love to hear from them. Well, good evening. This is Lynn Tokarczyk. We do have a brief slide presentation, so if I could be allowed to share the screen at some point. But I wanted to, I am Lynn Tokarczyk. I am the Government Tax Incentives Consultant for Yale Appliance. I'm here this evening with Steve Shankoff, who is the President, and Leo Goncalves, Vice President of Operations. And we'd like to thank the Select Board for inviting us here this evening. Um, we'd also like to thank the EDC for all the dialogue over the past several weeks and the unanimous approval for the TIF proposal last week, and, and to Mike Units um, for his uh, support and encouragement to attract the company to Morton. Uh, we also have uh, with us this evening, um, Jeff O'Neill is participating from Condine, who's the property owner, and um, Kara Griffin, who I, I noticed she was um, I saw a picture of her earlier, um, who was the executive director of the Tri-Town Chamber of Commerce, and she's joining us here this evening, and um, the Chamber's always been so instrumental. So thanks so much. So I will turn it over um, to Steve. Uh, we have a brief presentation. And while you're doing that, we also have Representative Barrows. It's on. Welcome, Mr. Barrows. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, can everyone see the screen? Not yet. We see a screen, but. Okay. Okay, I'll share my screen from the beginning. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Okay. Steve, you're on. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, considering my application. Um, I'm going to have a, a, a very short presentation. And uh, uh, last time at BBC, we spent most of the time answering questions. So we want to really spend whatever time it is uh, uh, discussing whatever questions and concerns you might have. About the company, we were actually founded in 1923, and we've been uh, in Boston since 1923. We, uh, we moved to Framingham in uh, 2015. And last year, uh, right before the pandemic, we, uh, we opened a, another store in Hanover. Uh, we are an appliance store, uh, which means we, uh, we don't just sell appliances, we install them, we deliver them uh, with our own trucks, and we uh, service them. Uh, we have a lot of the same brands you're probably familiar with that Home Depot and, and Lowe's do, but we have the more specialty items like Subterra, Wolf, Thermidor, uh, Gaganau, Jenny Air, and uh, many others as well. Uh, next slide. Yep. This is basically what we do. We're, we're an appliance store. Not, we don't sell hammers, or we don't sell uh, nails, or, or anything like that. It's just refrigerators, dishwashers, laundry, cooking, vents, all kinds of barbecues, six boxes, and vacuums. Um, next slide, please. Um, again, some of the brands. A lot of them you probably know. Some of them, you know, like a lot of Corner Range or Gaggenau, all of them, uh, you know, appeal to a more higher end. But we're <clears throat> we're a, a mid to a super premium appliance store. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, right now we are uh, uh, we've had to uh, after the pandemic we uh, we, we first opened in uh, Stoke in 2011 with uh, 85,000 uh, square feet. And uh, I think it was 2017, we, we added another warehouse in Stoughton at 25,000 square feet. And uh, just this year, we added another warehouse, ironically on the same street for another 25,000 square feet. And uh, uh, we leased that last one. So we, over the last uh, year or so, we've uh, done an extensive search to find a way to consolidate um, all these warehouses into one. Um, and quite frankly, we like it town. Um, next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is the uh, 
this is layout. It's going to be a corporate headquarters for distribution. There's a uh, it's 210,000 square feet, 10,000 of which is um, is is going to be retail. The rest is all distribution. The estimated um, project is 18 million seven hundred fifty thousand. Um, our our previous high for uh, for uh, a building was four million. Um, to give you an idea, we bought that warehouse in Stoughton for two million dollars. Um, um, so it's 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 been everyone talks about Bitcoin going up in warehousing and, and the cost of construction have gone uh, have gone up similarly. It's been uh, very expensive to find a very good piece of property. This is what it's going to look like right here. Uh, again, uh, nice thing about it is uh, it's not kind of, it's not a corrugated metal box. It's something befitting what I think a uh, headquarters should look like. Um, you have them. Uh, I'm, I, I, I like the town, but I like the company building it. You have these warehouses now, um, and they look good. Uh, it doesn't look like your typical white corrugated metal box. Uh, next slide, please. These are the type of jobs. Uh, marketing will be there, materials handling, shipping, receiving, drivers and installs, service technicians, warehouse, uh, uh, equipment, uh, maintenance office. The average salary of these people is seventy thousand uh, dollars plus profit share plus four hundred one k match plus uh, you were talking medical. We have uh, a very rich medical plan. Uh, we have tuition reimbursement as well. Uh, so these people spend money in towns. Uh, next slide, please. Again, um, I, I've always made this analogy. Uh, Leo and I, um, I, I spent a couple of days a week in Stowe, and Leo and I always go out to lunch at a local place called Deeks. There's 15 tables, three of which will have Yale, uh, will have, uh, Yale people in it. And you look at their takeout, there's probably another four or five just in the time that we're there. Um, because these people have the money to actually spend in, in local towns. Um, and we do now in Stowe um, for restaurants and other retail establishments. Uh, exactly. Um, we have a, a, a history of, since our founding, <clears throat> of supporting the local community, um, and it's different. It's different um, in every community here in Boston. We've been um, uh, we've been big supporters of Aces Place, which is the uh, floating children's hospital, Pine Street Inn, uh, veterans programs. I was on the board of Shelter Legal Services for a number of years. Framingham is the foundation for Metro West. We gave out uh, um, a couple million dollars to the local community during COVID. Uh, I, I'm on the board of that. Uh, we're, uh, we've always been big in, in seeing the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, seeing a solution uh, for that particular horrible disease as well. Whatever, whatever local charity uh, is important to your town, we will play a role in that. Uh, it's something that we believe in. We're a local company and we get back. Uh, this is Hanover. Uh, we didn't really get much of a chance to do much because of last year, but uh, we built some townhomes uh, on the South Shore. These are our guys uh, doing that. Uh, next slide, please. And again, uh, this is uh, who we are. We are a family-owned business. Uh, we live here. We spend money here. Uh, uh, this is our. This will be our corporate headquarters. Um, there were some questions about uh, vehicle excise tax. We have no problems. Uh, uh, registering our all our vehicles in Norton. Uh, um, and uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this slide I'm going to uh, turn over to my team that's about the tip proposal, but I also wanted to recognize our state representative Jay Barrows. Um, I didn't actually see his uh, photo live, but um, thank you, uh, Representative Barrows. You've always been so instrumental. Uh, with retaining and attracting businesses in this region. So, so glad you could join us this evening. Thank you. So, as you can see here, uh, it would be a 10 year TIF. Um, the first year, the TIF would be 85%, and then progressing down uh, the last year, 35%. So, the total uh, average 59% uh, TIF to the company. So the estimated TIF savings to the company over the 10 years would be $1,186,596. Uh, 
um, and then the inter, inter, incremental tax payment to the town is next to that um, over the 10 years um, $824,584 um, so uh, the town would see an increase in taxes over those 10 years of $975,000 $754. And then the next line is um, company vehicles that would be registered uh, in Norton. Um, and that's about $260,000 a year in additional costs. And uh, I know we don't have on here uh, the permits. I don't believe, right, Lynn? Uh, we don't have the permit costs. I know. Jeff could probably uh, talk more about that, but that's also um, revenue to the town. Right, right. The uh, the building permit would be in excess of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, so very similar to what was at Building Five, uh, sister building down the street. Okay. Thank you, Mike. I just wanted to clarify: the two hundred sixty thousand dollars is over a, a ten year. Oh yeah, so, yeah, ten years. Yeah. And then, That's great. Um, is, is that the end of your presentation? I don't want to speak out of turn. No, and th thank you so much for your consideration. Okay, that's great. Uh, I'll open up to uh, questions from the board. I don't have any questions. I just said uh, comment. I mean, I think your product is um, outstanding. So um, I would welcome the notion of your headquarters being in, in our town. So it's to me, it's very exciting. Um, and we would we would hopefully all welcome you in so we'll find out when we vote thank you thank you michael i see your finger of interest yep um jack we we had a long discussion and uh questions and presentation at the ubc as well and um i just wanted to thank them for originally coming back to us to, um, coming back to the ubc and making adjustments in the tiff um, the first presentation we thought was uh was um not as equitable for the town or equal and i think the changes that they've proposed uh, they've actually gone up uh, um, a, a few of the employees uh commitment as well and, and i really do think um to uh, echo Meg, meg's comments that this is you know going to be a real benefit to our town great christine anything you'd like to add or ask I was doing good with the mute and then it just decided to not work. Uh, I just have a couple, I know, seriously. I just have a couple questions. Um, so I see that, okay, so it's $26,000 times 10. Is that the 10 years or how many vehicles? Over 10 years, yes. That's okay. Then, okay, so then here are my questions. Um, how many vehicles will be housed? Will be registered? Yes. 60 plus 60 plus 60 uh, plus okay and what kind of vehicles are they just you know vans or larger trucks a combination of both perfect majority, um, majority on vans majority on vans and, and, and cars got it okay thank you and then will when i was looking at the other documents that we had about um the parcel Will the entry only be on Leonard Street? Because I know it does a, it does a butt to Burt Street. I just want to make sure there's not going to be an entry on Burt Street. Um, I, I can speak to that as the developer. So yes, the only entrance to the building in the phase two of Blue Star Park is off of Leonard Street. There will only be a fire access life safety uh, with a breakaway gate off Janet Street in case Life safety needs a second means of egress into the park. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I'm not sure if we're able to see it today or if I could get that information another time. Um, do we have like an exact location of where the building's gonna be on the parcel? <clears throat> um, I'm assuming because it's located, the entrance is located closer to Leonard Street, it'll be closer that way. But I just wanna make sure there's some buffer between the houses in the back on Burt Street. All that is being formulated now. Yes, there is a layout that's being um, being developed and the program is being developed. And by the separating of the zoning, 
there's a hundred foot distance automatically from residential to the industrial zone that we're in. So everything is well buffered. As you can see, it's located where the star is on that attached drawing. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot of questions, Christine. For my benefit, I'm assuming that this tip, if it goes forward, would be structured similar to the last one we did where it is with Blue Star development and then the real estate taxes, tax savings are passed on to Yale. Is that correct? That is correct. That's correct. How long is the lease that you guys are negotiating for this parcel? We have a long-term lease in place for, I think it's approximately about 15 years, but then there's two and three five-year options after. And also importantly to know is that Yale does have an option to purchase. So either they're going to be here long-term as a tenant leasing, or they're ultimately going to own the building and be here forever. That's great. I share the excitement of my fellow board members on bringing a company like yours to town. I think it's a great fit. If I can ask, what drew you to Morton? You know, it's funny you should say that. We were in Mansfield for a number of years, and I liked it. First of all, I liked the developer a lot. I said that before, it was a lot of fun. The warehouse, I really liked, when it wasn't on the last CDC, I said that before. I'm on record saying, I think he builds a great product. I think he builds something that people want to work in. You know, strange things like windows and thinking about how people actually work in a building. I like that. I like the town. I like the area because it's residential. It's a straight shot to the highway. We answered a lot of questions about trucks before, but I like that it's secluded. It looks like it's going to be a good place to work. It's centrally located. I like your town. Obviously, you guys are doing something right because we're in all kinds of towns. I'm in Framingham, and we're in Hanover, and nobody's doing senior citizen build-outs, town hall build-outs the way you guys are. I think you've got a good representation now with the right humans and the staff there. They're tough to fare. I think it'll be a good fit for us. We'll be able to go where we need to go to the markets we serve. Hopefully, we'll have some customers from your town. Hopefully, we'll get some employees from your town. I think it's just a good fit from the building to the town to just the overall business climate. Great. What sort of timeline are you guys looking at for this move forward? We'd like to get in the ground sometime in the early fall. We have to construct a roadway first to get access to the site, so that will be ongoing starting late summer. Then, deliver an occupancy. We're targeting mid-summer of 2022. Excellent. Mike, this would be for you. I'm assuming we would move forward with a special town meeting to get this done expeditiously? Yes. I think Lynn had mentioned that they'd be looking, hopefully, like the second week in August so that they can get into the state for the August meeting. Yes. Go ahead. Correct. When we were discussing with the EDC, I kind of looked at the end date, September, for a state certification. Once town meeting approved this, or a special town meeting. If that meeting is in September, the state certification meeting, then all of the documents need to be executed by mid-August. Then, to more or less back up from there, we were hoping, if you were so inclined to call a special town meeting at a select board meeting. Mr. Chairman, it's Jay Barrows, if I could real quick. The delegation representing Norton, both Representative Howitt and Senator Feeney, couldn't join the meeting tonight, but expressed their excitement for this TIF and the continued economic development for Norton. We are happy to carry that, as we have in the past, 
to the state for approval if it's so approved by both your board and the town meeting. So know that you, we have your, uh, we have your back on it and we'll do everything we can to get it approved as quickly as possible. So these folks can move ahead. Thank you, Representative Barnes. I appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, I, um, uh, Kara from the Tri-Town has had her hand raised. Yes, uh, thank you for pointing that out. Kara. Thank you, Mike. That's very kind. I just want to, so I'm Kara Griffin. I run the Tri-Town Chamber of Commerce, which serves Norton, Foxborough, and Mansfield. And I just wanted to make a note about, you know, the, the caliber of business that Yellow Appliances, they were in Mansfield for quite some time. And not only were, were they a good business entity, they also gave that to the community. The, um, every year in December, and Steve, I don't know if you knew this, every year in December, we put out to our members that they would like to adopt seniors in our areas. So we put out lists of senior wishes. It could be a blanket, could be a scarf, could be a CD, could be whatever they need. It's, it's coordinated with, um, with an Elbro area. So they go out, Yellow Appliance has had always, when they were there, adopted numerous seniors, brought in all the gifts to them. It was just, I, I think it's important that you know that the caliber of um, employees that you'll have there are fantastic, that they care about the community like that. And I hope that will continue as well when you're in Norton. But I just wanted to make that note because I think it's important when a new business comes to town and you don't really know who they are, they do have a history and they do care about the community. So I'm excited for you to come back to our area. We're excited to be here. I, 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 I miss I, being, in, uh, being in that park. And the, and the new park is kind of somewhere with the trees and everything. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what we do. We do it in Stoke, too, so, with the seniors. Thank you. Thank you, Kara, for sharing. Um, let's see, any other questions from, uh, from the board? Uh, Peter, I see you have your, your hand raised, if you'd like to share. Yes, that's right. I agree with Karen the game. This yield appliance is a good business and it'll be a perfect <laughs> in town in Norton, right? All right, well, uh, let's see about that. Um, thank you very much for the presentation and, and the discussion. Uh, I'm excited at the opportunity. Um, that said, Chair, obtain a motion to approve the TIF agreement for Yale Appliance as presented this evening. I move. Second. Okay. No further discussion. Third vote of the vote. Meg? Yes. Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. Aye, too, and uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, Lynn? Yes, I just wanted to ask, I wanted to make sure that you had the, pro the um, proper vote in front of you uh, the, uh, regarding the uh, recommendation to town meeting of the TIP agreement as well as the acceptance um, of approval of the submission of the EDIP application. So I'm assuming you have that language before you. Uh, if I don't, I can try to find it real quick. Is that in the, uh, the packet, Mike? The it's, thing that needs to be made? I have it if you need it. Is that just as it's written in the agenda, Mike? It says, um, vote to recommend to town meeting a tax increment financing agreement in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law. Chapter 59, Section 40, between the town of Norton and Yale Appliance and Leonard Street Phase 2 Owner LLC and to approve the submission of the EDIP local incentive only application to the Massachusetts Economic Assistance Coordinating Council in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 23A, Section 3A and 3C. Okay, Sharon, it's in a motion to approve that. <laughs> so moved. Yeah, second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We'll do the vote again for a matter of clarity. Meg? Yes. Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. And I am a yes as well. Uh, excellent. Thank you, Lynn, for the clarification and Mike for applying the language. Um, we look forward to seeing more of you guys. Congratulations.
Thank you. Thanks very much. We'll be around. Thank you. And I know Lynn also gave you draft, a draft article for the warrant. And so you can review that and see if you have any questions. And we can put on the next agenda, scheduling a special town meeting. Did I not? Did I see the agenda wrong? I thought that was our next item, is to take you through that. You can at least talk about that, right? That's the warrant article. Okay. I have one quick question now that it's coming back to me. I think it must have been 15 years ago. Did you guys used to do like a end of the year clearance sale in Mansfield at the warehouse or something? Yeah, we did a lot of that stuff before COVID. All right, so you got to promise you'll do that again because that was, I think that's where I got my refrigerator, to be honest. I wonder why you're so enthusiastic. We did do that. Yeah, we did, we did that. It was amazing. Amazing. Yeah, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, but COVID. The recommendation. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, Port of Inquiry. Um, when is, so, so Mike, just correct me if the timing on this for, we would open once we set the date, it would be a special meeting is seven days or 14. What's the timing on a, on a special town meeting? Uh, 14 days. Um, we have to post 14 days before the town meeting. Uh, so you'd open it, it would close within five days. Okay. And, uh, and what's the time frame again? What is the, when does this need to be done? But in, I know we said August, but when does it need to absolutely be done in August? Um, I'd have to look at, at that. I don't know if Lynn has looked at the timeline at all. I have. We, the latest, uh, we could have it is August 9th, which is a Monday, Monday, August 9th. And then that way we would have time to um, be able to obtain the executed documents. Um, we would need the select board signature, um, on any tip agreement and the other parties as well. Mr. Chair, may I ask another follow-up question? Certainly. So, so Mike, I know we were, we, I know you and I have spoken that we, the October meeting, there were several things we wanted to address there is, I mean, what, what is your vision for this special meeting? Is it just this item or is there more things? I know in October we had talked about possibly springing up the speed and there were just some other things that we had talked about. Um, I envision just this, but if, if uh, you're ready to bring anything up before October, you could, you could do that too. So your vision was just this item? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. So, so I think we should probably put that on for our next meeting, uh, which would be the 24th. Yes. We set that date and we can open that meeting. And uh, I propose we review the warrant language at that point. We can approve it to go down. Okay. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Representative Sanjay. Thank you, Kara. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank and you very much. Seeing more of you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Well, all right. Uh, exciting times. Uh, that brings us to item number six. Review a letter and citizen petition regarding bell music and discuss the town select board litigation policy. Uh, I'd like to split these in two, so let's talk about the letter and citizen petition regarding Bella Music. Uh, Michael, I think you, uh, you have provided yeah. that, if you'd like to speak to it. Yes, Mr. absolutely. May Mr. I, may Chair, I... just before we move on, um, okay, so for the discuss and or vote to the warrant article, so we're moving that to next meeting rather than discussing or voting on it tonight, is that the understanding? Uh, that's what I prefer to do. If uh, okay. no one feels otherwise, I'm certainly open open to that. I think it's probably cleaner just to, to do that, and perhaps we'll have Renee back at that point. Uh, that is no, that's okay. No, that's okay because I know they sent out the the warrant article um, over in the emails that we had, so I didn't know if there was. And uh, obviously, they, the answer for the time pressing sensitivity um, is there. But okay. No, thank you for clarifying. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. 
Well, and we're in, just to continue with the conversation, our next meeting is the 24th, correct? Give or take? I think that's the 24th, yep. And so that means the warrant needs to be closed by the 9th, if we're doing by the 9th, if we wanted to keep it on a Monday or something, the warrant would need to be closed by probably within or open and posted within two weeks from the 24th, give or take. Well, I, I think what? we would open it and then it closes within five days of us opening it. Okay, so you open it, you, you open it, closes, and then it, but it needs to be posted 14 days, Jack? Is that how it works? Uh, 14 days prior to the meeting, yeah. All right, so that even makes it even tighter. Just uh, I don't I don't believe so. I think if we open it on the 24th, yeah. it closes by like, like sometime around June 29th, give or take a couple working yeah. days. Okay. And and then that gives us basically the month of July okay. to get it posted. All right, perfect. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm sorry to bog, bog us down. I just wanted to be clear on our time. No, that I was actually going off of that too because I thought we were still discussing the the on the 24th we we're going to discuss the warrant and then we'd still have to open it so i didn't know we were discussing and opening the warrant on the 24th i just wanted to make sure that that's that's what we were doing so thank you both for all the clarifying <laughs> good questions uh all right are we good with that i'm turn it back over to michael for the uh, letter and citizen petition Yes, if you would just bear with me, I thought I had it open and I have the wrong letter open. Hold on one second. I'll uh, stop sharing in case you want to uh, to do that, Michael. Apologize. Sent it over and I. Hold on one second. I had it open, but give me one more second and I will get it to you. Does anyone by chance have the Jeopardy music keyed up? I indeed, really, this is the Yankee Killer Me here. Yeah. Well, that really made me want to do, 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 do. I've got it, I've got it, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. Oh. Thank you, Peter. Uh, let me share my screen. Nope, sorry, stop sharing. I wonder if we played the Jeopardy theme. But my kid, does we'll anyone else have it open in front of them? I will get it. It's just giving me apologize. I'm kind of playing with the new computer here and I'm scrambling. Do not have access to my town email on this computer. I can forward it again to the board if you guys want to do that, and that'll be at the top of your email. No, I've got it right in front of me. Thank you. I, thank you very much. I've got it right now. Who's, who's, who's doing that? That was very nice. Peter beat me to it. I was about to do the same thing. Yeah! Thank you, Peter. All right, Michael, take it away. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of pressure. No, no lies. Uh, it was uh, sent Friday, uh, June 4th. Uh, 2021 to 11 p.m. Uh, to myself um, from uh, Robert Pazes and CC Annabella Pazes. Uh, subject Conservation Commission case against 162 West Main Street Bella Music Center. Uh, hello, Mr. Tool. We're sending this as a follow up to a recent select board discussion and executive sessions related to the conservation case against 162 West Main Street Bella Music Center. We would like to request that the matter be brought to the public meeting versus the executive session. As you know, we have received an enormous amount of support from Norton residents as well as other Massachusetts municipalities who are extremely interested in seeing this case withdrawn from the uh, Supreme Judicial Court. In seeing and ending 
to this unfair, unnecessary, and damaging action against us. Attached, you will find the current uh, results of our change.org petition, which stands at 1,500 signatures and increase, increases daily. We look forward to your timely response. Robert Pesa. Uh, what's that? Who's that? Um, may I, may I, may I continue, Mr. Chairman? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, we obviously heard comments from uh, Mr. Welsh earlier today regarding litigations um, for them. This is something that we as a group um, have spoken about for several months to a year, trying to keep up to date with the amount of litigation that has gone on uh, with the town um, on different cases. And on this in particular case, um, there seems to be, while it has been argued in front of the um, judicial court, I, and we can't talk about things that we reviewed in executive session, I do feel there is there's a lot to this case and it should never have gone as far as this. And this is a personal opinion. I don't speak for the board, obviously. Um, but it is a, I do believe it has gone far and I don't feel everything has been exhausted on the settlement side. And I don't see the town winning one way or the other uh, with, a, a, with, a, with, with the town wins the, the case that's in front of them, in my opinion, the, it puts an undue pressure on a business that may not be able to survive. And if they, if the town wins, it puts the town in legal risk. And, and I really would encourage uh, this issue goes back. Um, I was provided uh, today by by the town manager a time frame that started the, the time frame that was given me was started in 2014. And I think that's an inaccurate representation of the time frame when the issue really goes back 30 years. Um, and the idea of disturbing wetlands from an issue that came up 30 years ago, I think would cause more damage. So one of the things I would love, one of the things I would love to propose to the board is a consideration of withdrawal from the case completely. Um, and with possibly a proposal or two mediation uh, to, for the Paises in the town, I really believe and we know that the withdrawal obviously has to be approved by the uh, Judicial Supreme Court. But we, while I can't talk about the effects of conservation, what I do have the right to talk about is making sure the town isn't putting themselves in legal or, or litigation harm. And I, I really do feel which should, this should never have gotten to that point. And so I would like to like to open up the floor for the discussion and possibly put a motion forward to withdraw from litigation as the as the Paises who are um, really, I, in my opinion, have been focused on a matter that should never have gone as far as it has. Uh, thank you, Michael. So, Rob, I see your hand up. Um, we'll get to the public items in, in just a minute. Keep it to the board for now, if you don't mind. Um, Thank you, Michael, for, for sharing that. Uh, open to certainly open to the discussion. Um, Mike, I defer to you if the, the board has the ability or the authority to withdraw from this, or if this would just be a public show of support in one direction. Um, I, I'm, I am not sure that's something that we would have to uh, ask counsel. Um, I'm not sure what his position would be and if it's possible to withdraw from the Supreme Court. Um, your motion could be to request that he investigate that as and if possible, as you and if possible withdraw it. I just want to um, say a few words on this. Um, and again, um, I just want to be clear for, I guess, for, for the record, 
Um, and I know there's been lots of, you know, insults been thrown around on both sides. Um, and, you know, I, I appreciated the comments when we started the meeting of, uh, that, um, was it Steve that talked about, you know, we're, we're a volunteer board and we're doing the best we can. And, you know, with the, I, I, my kids have actually taken music lessons at Bell Music. So um, I fully appreciate we rented clarinets from you and guitars and other good things. So um, nothing, this, there is no personal agenda and I can speak, I can speak probably for the entire board on that. Um, we're just trying to figure out, and again, I, 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 I hate not being able to respond when we get these emails and inquiries from, from the town residents, but I'm just trying to figure out what we, what are, um, what we legally can and can't do. And, you know, I come from a family of lawyers, so, um, you know, I've always known that you just wait, wait till we can figure out what we, what we can do about this. We're all in support. We want Bella Music to thrive, um, but we also want to, you know, we don't also don't have any authority right now to sort of make these decisions. So I'm, I'm coming in this, like, I'm just trying to figure out a 30 year history, like what has happened and doing the best we can. So I just want to ask for a little, uh, I don't know if it's forgiveness or just um, understanding as, as a select board, we're all relatively new and we're trying to figure this out as we go along. So, um, and, and again, trust me, I know personally, I have no hidden agenda here. I just want to make sure that, um, you know, the town continues to thrive and, um, so sort of, it's, it's just frustrating. I hate seeing stuff and then I, I can't respond. So I'm just, I just want to let it know that it's not that we don't care. We're just trying to figure out what we can and can't do. So to Meg's point, I think the last thing that any of us wants to do is say something out of the best of intentions and then jeopardize anything that's been done. Um, so I think we're, we're erring on this side of silence and caution to let the process work out. Um, that, that's how I'm approaching it anyway, and it sounds like Meg, you're taking the, the same approach. Um, Rob, if I could just ask you to, to, to mute a little bit until we're ready for you. Uh, any further comments or questions, Michael? Um, sorry, I was bumped off by the internet. Um, so I understand that we we have an abundance of caution that we have to be here, and and I understand in any withdrawals, I can't put the town in in, in liability either. Any request that I would be making would be without prejudice, um, obviously. Um, but I think we have gotten uh, understanding over several from our council that we do, this does fall within our lane of responsibility, legal matters within the town. Um, and that we, I, I would never ever even begin to enter and, and, and try to address the conservation concerns within this property. But there's, there's been mishandling on, I would say this whole situation from high to low, there's been mishandlings over the 30 something years. And, you know, I don't know how to move this forward, right? Is, is I've, I've, we've had a couple of executive sessions that we, we can't speak about, but nothing's happened out of those executive sessions. And it, it, it what worries me is we as a board do have the right to ask for, ask to stop legal. Doesn't mean that SJC will, will grant it, but we do have that legal right. And it's, I feel like we're in this waiting game of, you know, of, okay, they're trying, I feel like part of our legal team and our counsel is out waiting us for hoping that a decision comes from the SJC. And, and that's just not acceptable to me. Um, I also think it's very out of this discussion, and it won't probably happen tonight, I probably will bring a policy to this board that will basically say any future legal litigation needs to be approved by the select board. I don't know, as I've spoken to past select board members, it was always kind of this policy that we had. I don't know where, where it's gone to go off the rails on it. 
but I, I see there are several, you know, we've seen several things that, you know, I, let's go to Cumberland Farms just for one example, where that matter went to appeal. And what is that happens? The court says, sends it back to the town and, and the property owner to negotiate. Well, all we did was waste several thousand dollars of litigation expense for a town that basically for people that just stopped negotiating. And, and Sometimes I know litigation is necessary. I just think we're doing it in an unnecessary matter on, on a burden on businesses and residents of this town. And I think this is where this board takes a stand and, and puts a request into uh, our council to withdraw this matter um, and, and get back with it, with it, with and urge them to get back to mediation. So I, I hear what you're saying, Michael. Um, and I would love to see an amicable, amicable resolution to this come up. Um, I personally would prefer to see a that resolution or a, a settlement um, done before such a request would go forward to provide some sort of um, uh, lost the word there, but some measure of incentive on both sides to work this out before a decision is rendered. Um, that's, that's my personal opinion only. Um, anyone else on the board before I, you know, we have uh, Rob and then uh, Mr. Pisa is on as well. So I, I do have a couple things. Um, please bear with me with my wording as I try to figure this out in my head. Um, I respect everybody's opinions about every situation because a lot of it is opinions. Um, a lot of it is, is facts. I just, my whole thing is I'm trying to keep the facts as the facts um, and opinions as the opinions. And I have my opinions. Everybody has their own opinions. It's just trying to keep the facts as they are separate from the opinions and what, like everybody's saying, what we can and can't do. Um, I personally, with this whole situation, I feel like if, if we do not agree with taking the, with, um, taking it out of court and, you know, just ending it there, taking it out of court and not letting um, a decision be made. I feel like if any, how, how it personally feels to me is that if anybody on the select board does not agree with that, you are wrong. You are 100% wrong. You need to be with the paces and that's the end of the story. That's personally how I feel. And I do want to be with the paces. I feel for them. I understand how tough it must be with what you're going through, not just financially, but also um, men mentally and emotionally, because you guys, I, I don't know exactly what you've been through, but just from reading all the posts and reading, you know, both sides of the stories, I can, I, I understand. Um, my biggest concern, like I said, is if we, if we as a select board do not vote to take it out of court, don't let a decision come is that we're going to be chosen as wrong. And I don't want to be chosen as wrong because <laughs> if you really want to know, I think this whole thing is wrong. I don't think it should have went as far as it did. Um, I think there was something and I didn't want to bring this up because I was very nervous to say what I want to say, but I'm going to say it. Um, I think there was some sort of shady back end thing that happened back in the day and I can't speak um, for anybody, but that's just, just from reading it, I'm very concerned that there was something that happened and we don't have the correct information um, or the, the truthful information. That's just my personal opinion. So um, what I want and I want all the members to understand is that just because we might not agree on this situation does not mean we don't want the same end goal. And I want the PACES to be in business in Norton for the rest of the time that they want um, and if they want to retire, please don't, because we know how important you are to the, to the town. Um, and so many residents have spoken up. I personally have not taken any musical lessons. If you guys want to teach me how to play guitar, that would be fantastic. Um, but 
we don't want to see you go. We don't want anything to happen to you, but we do want to see a resolution to an error that has been made. Whether it not be your error or someone else's error, something needs to get fixed, and we're just trying to work that out. And we're trying the best that we can. Um, we don't. There is no right or wrong. We're just we're trying. That's all I can say. I think that's very well said, Christine. Um, I think we have, we have a lot of empathy um, individually for for the family involved, um, and it is just a an unfortunately messy situation that has compounded over years and years and years and and brought itself to to, to this point here. Um, all right, uh, I think Rob, you had your hand up first. Yeah. Over to you. Oh, Michael. Yes, Michael. Just before you move on, uh, attorney. Uh, Alex Weishman said that, that it's uh, strictly up to the Supreme Court whether any withdrawal would be allowed. I think that's what Michael had said, that they would ultimately need to accept any petition to withdraw. Um, I, 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 I will point of inquiry, it starts with us, though. We need to put the request into our council to ask the Supreme Court withdrawal. That it starts here today. And, and that's the point I'm trying to make. It's a tough decision. I understand it's everyone's tough decision. This is a tough thing to do, but I think it, it requires us to make a tough decision tonight. So I, I will just say for the record that this board is made up of five co-equal members. Each and every one of us is able to make any motion as they see fit. Um, it is our board, it's not my board. I don't control anything. Um, so at any point, anyone can make a, a motion that they that they so choose. So and that and that is completely valid and will be supported. All right. um, thank you, Mike, for, for bringing that up. Uh, Rob, I know you're waiting. Uh, I, uh, well, that's okay, because a lot of my stuff got covered, so I can be shorter. Um, I do want to agree completely with Mr. Yunus was just saying. Um, I, I'm a little bit bamboozled by this, you know, do we have permission to withdraw our case? I would think that if we say we don't want to do it anymore, you know, if one side says they don't want to do it anymore, they could. But if that's the way it is, so be it. But I would like to see the town then have petition for its withdrawal, have that be an action that's taken, not something we're still saying we have to do. Um, so thank you, Mr. Units, for your um, approach on this, and I agree completely with what you're saying here. Um, the other thing I just wanted to add is, um, when I was looking into this, something I did, and I believe you said Mr. Pace is on, so you can speak, Pisa, I apologize. Um, I don't know them as well as you think, um, but I believe he's on and can speak to this, but I went over there and asked to be allowed to go back there and really look at what we were talking about with my own two eyes. And this comes to the point the lady was making a minute ago about facts versus opinion. Um, I, I went back to to see exactly what we're talking about. If you read this case and they win and they say, oh yeah, we've got to dig all this out, and uh, you should go back there and look what's going to happen. It, the first thing that would come to you is that would be a wrong thing to do. We look at what you're doing. If that's not conservation. You, and um, rather than me talking in circles, trying to say that six different ways, I would encourage everybody, Mr. Units, you yourself may want to go look at this, and anybody else here, Jack, you just, um, make a point with them, go over there, and take a look at what they're talking about digging out. You're going to see 40 foot trees. I mean, this is a very old thing. And then, uh, Mr. Tool, I apologize. I got that wrong, and I, I'm not well versed at this game, so I got the names wrong. Um, so what Mr. O'Toole was just saying then, I, and um, I want to back that then, um, but if we want to withdraw, we should be able to say so. I'd like to hear that we have officially asked the Supreme Court. I, I would think it should be our call. And then I encourage you guys, go look for yourselves. Go Make an appointment that I'm sure they'd be happy to show you, and go back there and see what they are talking about really rather than just reading all this stuff on Facebook or in these letters or talking to these news, go, go see it with your own eyes. It's, it is an eye-opener thing. It, it, you walk out of there shaking your head wondering what's going on, but um, you really should go see it. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate the comments. Um, Mr. Pisa? Hello. So a couple of points I'd like to make. First of all, 
we have spoken to two separate attorneys, our own and an, an uninvolved third party. And both have said that it is within your purview to withdraw the case. It is up to the Supreme Judicial Court to decide whether they will or not. But the decision is within the town of Norton. Flat out, absolutely no question about that. The second thing I'd like to point out is um, Ms. DeVoe mentioned what she perceived as uh, at best a shady issue that has happened in the past. I would encourage you to look at your own town records because there's no matter of opinion. These people were all in the Conservation Commission together in the 80s when this happened. The owner of the property, Julian Kadish, the current chairman, were both on the commission when this happened. Mr. Kadish approved the work. So there's, you need to look no further than your own records to identify this, no matter of opinion. If you can't find it, please look at the Facebook blog we wrote because every document is attached there. And the last point I wanna make, there is no violation. There is no evidence of a violation. There is no filed violation. The allegations are based on an email between Jennifer Carlino and an engineer in 2014 that is filled with maybes and I don't knows. And in fact, the matter of the biggest part of the fill, 13,000 square feet, is clearly on that email that the engineer says this does not look like it was wetlands. This looks like it was simply an, a lower elevation. That is the basis, that email, all the numbers in that flimsy email are the basis for a lawsuit against us that has cost us $80,000. I encourage you to look at your own town records. And if, excuse me, my name is Annabella Pisa, and if you don't find that in your records, that's because they've been taken out of there. Please feel free to reach out to us. We have hard copies of everything. And we also like Mr. Cater to explain why in 2015, after approving all of this back in 1988, he signed an enforcement order against my husband and I. That is all in the records. This isn't something we're making up. There's nothing to be confused about. It's all based on facts. That's Thank impressive. you. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Mr. Mar. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Mar, to Pine Street. Um, so, my question for the board is this: um, This is this is an issue that happened 37 years ago the paces didn't even own the building at that time so how if if the town proceeds with this how is every other business owner not at risk for a similar type of action even though they weren't the ones who did or did not do something right or wrong and they were not the ones who owned the property that they're in at the time that it happened what prevents the town from going after every other business and every homeowner in this town if they feel the need to just do something because they want to which is what this feels like to me with everything i've read with all the documentation that i've seen that the paces have posted it seems completely wrong and it seems like it puts literally everyone at risk not just this business and not just these two fine people thank you thank you bill if i can i think i can speak to that point based on what we have heard quite previously and uh mike feel free to correct me if i'm overstating or saying something i shouldn't i believe the 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 issue here is that there was an open order of conditions that was never properly closed out that came up during a title search when the purchase was was going forward. This is not something that could impact any and all residents. This is related specifically to something that, to your point, was opened 30, 37 years ago and never properly closed out. So 
I hear what you're saying. This is not something that John Doe is going to need to worry about um, for his property. Um, this is my understanding. So, my Pat, whose responsibility it was to close this out who failed to take that action? Was that um, the town's responsibility to close that out 37 years ago? Again, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but I believe that responsibility falls to the original property owner. They, they own the responsibility for closing uh, out the order of conditions. Correct. Yeah. So when there's an order of conditions issued on a project, um, it's recorded at the registry of deeds. And when um, the owner, once the uh, work is completed, is supposed to apply for a certificate of compliance. And then that also gets recorded at the registry of deeds. So if someone is buying a piece of property and someone did work and they hadn't closed out the order of conditions and it was recorded at the registry of deeds, that would come up during the title search and the buyer would then usually require that the owner close up the order of conditions before they pass papers. And on this, can I, can I clarify a point here? Uh, one, one moment, Rob. One moment. Okay. Um, and to that specific point, when we've met with the Conservation Commission, we have requested them to do more regular reviews of open orders of conditions uh, to catch situations like this that may have fallen through the cracks with people who may not be aware that there is an open order of conditions from the property that they, they own and they was opened under their ownership. So, and they have uh, agreed to do that. So, um, Rob, we'll jump to you. Um, yeah, I just like to clarify. When I read through everything, the order conditions was one of the things I read. It listed a dry well and something else. Driver, you can clarify this, but I do not believe it spoke to this whole fill thing that they're going off on. It, it related. It spoke to some other items, but not this. This is something that sort of just suddenly appeared. So we're getting dangerously close to, to I think, a junior. Okay, and we can stop, but the, the, I'm just, what I'm going to say there is that is something, and you can check me on it, but I went and read that in the papers. That, that, okay. That's fine. Leave it at that, then. I read that in the papers. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Mr. Pisa, I, uh, I don't know if your hand was up before, if you still have a comment. Okay. So I want to just clarify something. We knew about the open order of conditions. It was brought up by our closing attorney. We offered to solve any open order of condition, of which there were very few. We proposed a very formal proposal to the Conservation Commission to do that. The matter of excess fill was not even mentioned until 2014. So this has nothing to do with the original order of conditions. Again, we knew about that. We offered to do all of the work silk fence, dry well, stabilized banks, whatever all that is. We offered it in a formal proposal, which I can give you. It is not about that. This, If this case is won in the Supreme Judicial Court, everyone is at risk because what is protecting us right now is something called the order of repose, which prohibits any kind of civil action after three years. This is trying, this, this appeal is trying to overrule that and make it so the Conservation Commission across the state can go back unlimited amount of years to anybody. So Bill's point is, is solid and real. That is a very possible risk from this litigation. It's a power play. They want to be more powerful. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Peter, and then we'll, we'll put Yes, it. yes, I agree what everyone, yes, I agree what the pizzas are, wonderful people, and I visit their shop a couple of times to make sure they're okay, and they are wonderful people, and they don't deserve this treatment, and back in the 80s, it was an orthodox seafood place back then, mid-80s, owned by Mr. John Texera. All right. Thank you, Peter. And um, I do appreciate everyone coming and speaking to us. I know this is this is a passionate issue. Um, it, it impacts people in a very real way. Right? This is not an abstract thing. These are real people, our neighbors that are 
that are hurting that have been suffering for for years. Like, I don't, I don't think anyone takes that takes that lightly. So thank you for taking the time to come to speak with us to share your perspectives. Um, it it does mean a lot to me personally, and I and I think the board appreciates it as well. Um, I think the try to bring this bring this in. Um, I see Michael and Christine both put their fingers of interest up. So, uh, Michael, would you go first? Christine, would you like to go first? I was just adjusting my glasses. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, mis I misread uh, the body language. Thing. There, there we go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion that the select board request town council to withdraw the appeal of Norton versus Peza from the SJC without prejudice. Okay. There is a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll go to the vote. Meg? Yes. Christine? Same. Was, was that a yes? I'm abstaining from the vote, please. Oh, abstain. Michael? Aye. Um, and I am a no. Um, for the reasons I stated previously, that I feel that keeping this open will hopefully push folks to sit down uh, and have a mediation session. Um, as Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe, is that carry? It was two to one with an abstain? It would. Mr. Chairman? Yep. I would like to uh, make a motion that the uh, Norton Select Board um, instructs Town Council to reach out to the Paisas for to offer mediation um, at a first available immediately. And I'm not sure what the timing is, but the, I think you get the gist of what I'm what I'm proposing. Okay. So, so we're now on to a, a different motion. The first one is has passed. Uh, do we have a second for for that? Second. Okay. Uh, we'll go to the vote. Meg? Yes. Christine? Michael, can you just clarify for the record what you mean by mediation? It, it, Christine, it's to get them back to, back to the table. Mediation, typically, and the terms before you go into mediation are usually determined on what the ground rules are, but it's, it's, it's a way to get both parties back to the table to negotiate to try to find a settlement. Uh, that's what I wanted you to say. Perfect. Thank you. And I, I am a yes. Okay. Michael? That was a yes. Uh, and I am an enthusiastic yes to that. I would very much like to get uh, all parties back to the table. And if it would be beneficial to have representation from the select board there, um, I would be willing to offer my time. Michael, I'm sure you would be as well. Um, if anyone else is interested, please coordinate with, with Mike. On that, obviously, we can't have more than two folks, um, but I think that would be in the best interest of, of all involved. All right. Cool for cats. Thank you, everybody, for that discussion. Thank you, Michael, for the motions. Um, I believe that is done. Uh, we're on to our last item of new business, uh, which is the discussion on creating a resident group to study ways to improve the launch area at Juniper Beach. Uh, this is something I had requested to, to put on there. Um, one of the things that I've heard for for years, even predating my time on this board, is how atrocious the Juniper Beach boat launch area is in terms of the parking situation and people's adherence to the rules and guidelines that are there, um, both in terms of proper boating etiquette, uh, blocking that, parking in people's driveways, and the hours of operation. Um, it's been Two plus years since since I've been on the board, and we have not been able to make any headway on this. And I know that this this goes back probably decades. Honestly, um, I would like to propose to the board that we start seeking resident input. The folks that are most impacted by this, either by living in the area, by using the area, I think they're going to have some of the best insights in terms of how to address this in a truly meaningful and lasting way. Uh, I got a text message the other day of a truck with a uh, boat trailer parked literally directly underneath a no parking sign. So clearly what we've done to date is not working. 
So I'd like to sort of get the board's opinion on that. And if you approve, we can try to solicit some community involvement on that. And Mike, I don't know how this would dovetail in with Jen's note earlier today about the water body study and official boat launch area. I think they would be two separate things that would probably come together at some point. Well, if I could just on that. So SERPED has been doing a study on that. And as part of that study, that Juniper Beach area is being looked at. We're waiting for our town council to finish title search, searches on the properties abutting Juniper Beach so that we can draft a plan on what we can do as far as access and parking. And there'll be a survey going out soon from SERPED that any residents can respond to to get their feedback on what they'd like to see done. And I know Jennifer has suggested in the meantime, if we post signs there telling people with rooftops to park at 237 Mansfield Ave for the rooftop access to try and reduce the number of vehicles parked in that area. And then at 237 Mansfield Ave, we'll put up parking signs showing where they can park their vehicles in order to have access out to the reservoir from there. Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. So as most of you know, I grew up on two streets over from that on Cedar. So that is literally, that was my playground. Those rocks are my playground growing up. So I've seen that when I was growing up, we didn't even have, there's like a nice billboard now that explains, you know, leave no trace, all that stuff. Never had the billboard, never had a trash can. It was just kind of like people would show up, park their cars, and that would be the end of it. It has gone out of control because I still go over to that area and I don't park my car. I walk over there and it's, I've seen bad things. That's close to my grandmother's house. It's close to my family's house who's still there. And it's, it needs to be addressed. Like you said, the signs aren't working. I've seen the signs. I walked over to the signs and I get the signs, but people don't read anymore, unfortunately, which leads into a lot of other issues. I don't know what we can or can't do. You know, I know we talked or mentioned moving the rocks to kind of block the other way so they would come down Juniper and just go straight. I don't foresee that being, you know, any better because then you have a resident's house right there where their driveway is right there. You know, I do think having this resident study with every single person who touches that, what is it, Lagoon, no, Lagoon, anybody on Lagoon, anybody on Juniper, and anybody on the dirt road, and now I'm blanking on the name, but I thought that was still part of Lagoon. Anybody who abuts the boat access, even if they don't become a part of a group, I would just like to reach out to them to understand what what are their issues that they've been seeing, um, whether whether it be starting a group if they're passionate about it, which we hope they are, joining this group or just gathering their opinions. And whenever we need to reach out to them, we can be able to reach out to to get further feedback. That's what I would recommend. I had someone recently pull into my driveway saying, "Where's Juniper Beach? I want to go where all the action is." I'm like. <laughs> Well, first of all, you're in my driveway, but second of all, it's down two streets down. So, but it, it is, it's a, it's a, um, if anyone knows that the area like Christine um, mentioned, I mean, it's such a, it, it's packed, jam packed with houses and I, I'm not, you know, it's a bigger discussion than just throw up some signs, no parking. I mean, I don't know where people are going to park. Um, yeah. So anyway, it's. I would share my screen while we're, while we're talking about this. You can see just the densely populated residential area that is there. 
Um, and we, we talked to the, the previous item about, you know, items, things that were done 30 years ago that we're still feeling the impact from. This is another one. I understand that those rocks were put there uh, sometime in the 80s um, by an individual that didn't want traffic going down their street. And now we're faced with this and, and people become used to those rocks. And now the folks that are there don't want the rocks to go. It's just, it's a very complicated issue. And I would very much like to hear from the residents in there to understand how best we can do that. And for, to Mike's point, maybe it's not using this. We have, uh, pardon me while I zoom out, there's, uh, I think this area down here used to be a community, community spot. I'm not familiar with the, um, the depth of the various areas and what can be viable. I think that's what the circuit study is going to do. Um, the challenge that I see that we're going to have is that a number of these individuals have been ringing this bell for years and feel unheard uh, because there hasn't been substantial improvement made. Um, I think we need to make a authentic and truthful commitment to them to listen to some of their suggestions for what can be done. Mr. Chair, may I? Absolutely. Um, I agree with you. I think this is, this is a great idea. The only thing, and I would just caution that we kind of list what the scope of the kind of, we want to hear all the feedback in this. What I don't want to do is get into a situation where this group might come together and say, let's go close Juniper Reach uh, uh, boat launch. And it's, that's, I want to make sure that it's kind of, we're there to kind of make these set plans that we're not going to be closing things. And, and we do need access and we don't have the best access points to the res and we, I know the master plan is looking at that as a whole um, and, and this, I would also, there's one thing that I, I would, um, I have two questions, I guess, for, for um, Mr. Units, does this, does, do the police have everything they need regarding bylaws and so forth to ticket cars regarding Juniper Beach? Do they have everything that they, uh, right? I mean, because Sometimes I feel like we say, well, that send the police down and tick them, but is there bylaws? Is, is, do, are, they, are they in there within their right to ticket cars if they're parked illegally? They are, and we, we actually change um, a portion of the bylaw last October to make sure we took everything into account as far as the time that pe the park closes um, and when they can ticket. Okay, perfect. And my second question is, is has the bylaw addressed out of state um, boats? One of the things that's becoming more and more of an issue, you go down to some of these boats, you see Connecticut and Rhode Island plates there, which kind of blew me away. Um, but it was brought to my joint from a residence. We spent a lot of money cleaning, cleaning the res and um, when to cut it. And, you know, by bringing in other state boats, there's no place to rinse your boat before you put it in or rinse it out which puts this in another area of wasted money. And I want to make sure that, that, that this is also on someone's radar uh, of, of concern. But, but back to your point, Mr. Chairman, I think it's, I think it's a great idea. And I think it's time that, that we, we do put together a group to really study what the impact is to that area. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I see uh, Troy Cooper has his hand up. I know he lives in the area and uh, I know he's been interested to, to speak on this. Troy? Hi, how you doing? My name is Tori Krupa, Six Foxbury Road. Uh, I just want this to extend a little bit further than the people just adjacent to that, because myself and my son are down there on a the daily basis, literally on a daily basis. And I have to agree with you, this something has to be done. I've lived in this house for 16 years now. The reservoir has become 10 times better than it ever has, um, to the point where it's an asset to this town. It, it, it could potentially be um, a form of making money for the town as far as possibly in the future thinking about doing stickers and things like that. Other towns do the same thing when they have bodies of water. Um, this could be a way of paying for the things that are needed down there, like uh, the trash disposal. That doesn't, it's not free. You know, it costs somebody money, it costs us all money. I just want to make sure though it does extend a little bit further out. 
Uh, there is a couple of safety hazards down there as we speak right now. Um, there's some fence posts that are literally sticking out into like where walkways are and that third road going in there. They're spray painted orange. They need to be either removed or cut back. Uh, the no parking sign that was put up, that was put 15 foot up the side of a tree could potentially be a problem why people are parking there. I mean, it's pretty obvious that it's there, but someone disputes that they have a, a reason to. It's pretty far up a tree. Can we just shove in a metal post and put it right in their face so they can see it? And then um, where we did make that no parking area, that was potentially for the fire department to be able to have a safe way of accessing that lake due to the fires that we've had out on those islands in the past couple of years. Because we've all seen them, they've been all posted everywhere. And there's a problem with that because there's chain link fence literally buried in the ground with the post right in that corner. And it's been getting all chewed up and there's metal shards and everything everywhere. Hopefully that'll all come in time, but I just kind of wanted to throw my two cents in there. And if we could, I definitely would be love to be part of that and you know, making it a better area for everybody to use. That's, that's all I have to say about it. I agree, Tori. I'm, I'm right on Reservoir and actually Evergreen's the other one right on the other side of me. Um, and I know it's not, it's not as big um, of a boat area, but there's a little beach there. Um, and if yep. we did it right, um, there's much more room in terms of parking on that, on that road. Um, so it's just another option. So we definitely need to explore this um, because I do think the reservoir really is our future if we want to, you know, continue to grow the town and um, attract new residents. So um, it's, it is, it can be absolutely beautiful. So um, yeah, I would definitely, again, expand beyond just the residents right there. Because mm -hmm. um, again, I'm, on, I'm in, right in between both of them and um, it would be great to sort of see what we could do. My other thing is too is, it, I know our police have already got enough, got their hands full and everything else like that, but we do have that no parking sign down there. Enforcement. If we start, if we build basically, I hate to say it this way, but if we build a reputation of if you park in that area, you're going to get a ticket. You may not see, you know, the word's going to get around. Word of mouth spreads faster than anything. So I'm just kind of curious if we can get a little bit more enforcement down there. Listen, I know we're already strapped as far as the police station goes and they may not have time and things go wrong and things happen. But I think if we have a little bit more enforcement, because I see it, like I told you, I'm down there every day, literally every afternoon we're going down there. And every single weekend since that sign's gone up, it's there. It's been there. And I, I mean, I, I can take pictures and show you every single one of them every weekend. So that's just another recommendation that I could throw out there. So if we can get a little bit more push on that end of it, I think it might help too. Excellent. Thank you, Tori. Uh, and, and I agree with, with that. I, I don't believe it should be limited to just the individuals that are immediately in that area. I think it is um, that in the entire Grove neighborhood, as well as um, folks who may not live there but use it. Right? I think that's an interesting perspective to have as well about what voters could benefit from than that. Um, my my mom lives in Weymouth near West Augusta Beach and the town just installed an automatic gate and residents get a little little key card and they pull up, scan it, and up it goes and that controls the parking. Obviously that's a very different environment. They have a large parking lot there. It's not packed on top of um, residents uh, residential homes. We talked about a gate before. Uh, the issue then becomes who is locking and unlocking it. Um, there, there's a lot to untangle there. So I understand why this has been sort of a thorn in the side of both the town and the residents in that area for, for quite some time. Um, but it sounds like there's uh, some good support to try to address this in a, in a different way. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just to Tori and anyone else that um, is listening, if they could just drop me an email. So I have their email addresses and um, I can keep them up to date on any uh, information that SERPIT develops as they go along in their plan. Mr. Town Manager, what's your email address? M-Y-U-N-I-T-S at Norton, M-A-U-S dot com. 
See, Mike, that was your opportunity to say it was M T O O L E. So uh, I will start pushing this out um, to solicit some some interested parties, like like Mr. Cooper here, um, would be interested in, in, in participating and sharing that. Uh, I don't quite know the format. Maybe it's a, a community forum where we just get people in, uh, either in person or on, on a Zoom call, to try to get some some ideas. Um, obviously, there's a lot of the complexity there based on you know what land does the town own, the depth of the water. There's there's a lot there, so we probably need support from Zoom Paul as well as Jim on this. But we can try to cross that bridge when we get to it. So thank you for your support on this. And um, to to Tori's points about some of these materials that are that are poking up and causing the hazard, Mike, could you reach out to Highway and see if they are yep. able to remove those at their earliest convenience? Yep, I got that written. Uh, I would also like to give a, a shout out to uh, to Joanne and the highway department who uh, agreed this morning to increase the trash pickup in that area based on some of the feedback we got that the trash can is going to hold up uh, much faster, especially over the weekends. So they're going to do their pickups on um, Friday as well as on Monday. So hopefully we can see some improvements there. Um, Mr. Chairman, I just have a question um, for the for gathering people, like you said, to be a part of this study or just gather information. Um, I believe a forum would be fantastic, or you know, like um, like a community info session. Um, is there also a way for those who do not have access or prefer a technology free or less light. Um, I'm not sure, you know, the, the dollar amounts or how we could do this, but is there a way to do it the old fashioned way and put like flyers in the mail? And for any, I would honestly do for anybody who from the Mansfield line on, on Reservoir, all the way down Reservoir Street, um, anybody who touches Reservoir Street, any of the streets down there, if we're able to put like a flyer and or some sort of Norton alert. Um, you know, some way to reach people who don't, who don't have technology and wouldn't want to do a Zoom, um, cause I can speak for a few groups who are in that area who would rather, who, who, who physically can't do, you know, a, a Zoom meeting, um, but they would, you know, go to an in-person one where they could listen and add their opinions. Um, I'm not sure if that's a possibility. Um, I defer to Mike on the, the question of mailings because that's a, a budgetary item. However, I I think with things opening up and the willingness of some of our you know, historic partners in terms of hosting events like the library and North Media Center, I think we're probably to a uh, multimedia approach and do some Zoom sessions as well as in-person ones to try to get that out. Um, I, I gather that word of mouth travels pretty well through that area, so hopefully if we can get some some information penetration through there. We can try to get a lot, but I agree. Let's, let's try to get as many people as we can. And I think if you get volunteers that um, are participating, they may be willing to distribute flyers in the area. I'll go do it. It's on my morning walk. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for entertaining the discussion. Um, we'll get that, uh, get that started. I'm going to find my other screen. Uh, I believe that includes new business. So we can go to our old business, um, which is a discussion and or vote on any changes to the remote participation policy. I believe this was Renee Baby. And she, uh, Jack, 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 can I leave you with a one sentence new business? Or it's very quick. Um, I'd like to see, and you're going to have to only just take this away, you won't be able to answer it right now. Uh, if there could be a means for someone who, maybe they saw a full trash can of a boat ramp or somebody's done illegal dumping around, and they just decide, you know, I'm going to do something about this, and they want to pick it up. The challenge with doing that isn't the picking it up. Some of us have pickup trucks and a strong back, no problem. It's what to do with it when it's done. Um, in the past, some things near my house that I just didn't, didn't want to look at, I actually just paid to drop them off at the Britannia things, but that's closed now. And if they could create a means for somebody to get rid of it, if they picked it up, 
there's people in this town, I'm not alone, uh, I do know of a few others, that would be willing to just sit here and there and just say, you know, I'm going to do something about that, pick up an illegal dumping site or something. And if there was a place to put it, we would. And that place to put it is a challenge. There, there are some challenges with it, um, including making it so people can't take advantage of it and things. But um, I'd love to see that open because um, we do have things around here. The highway department does not have time to pick it all up. And citizens that are willing to just pitch in and help. That, that's something that should be taken advantage of if you got it. So that, that, that's I, a great point. Um, yeah, I don't think you can answer it, so I just want to leave it as, as a takeaway. If you guys could talk amongst yourselves what possibly could be done along that way. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, um, anyone that picks something up like that can um, go to the highway department and uh, they'll, they'll help you uh, get rid of that. I called them and they said no. Really? Yeah. I'll and I have it. actually paid to take it to the Britannia facility instead because of that. I'll, I'll check with them on that. Okay. Well, their problem, and it's a real one, is how do they know I didn't just clean up my basement? True, true. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's a legit yeah, problem. Yeah. yeah. But if we could find a way around that, you know, people yeah. that want to help. So. Okay. Have a good Thanks. night, guys. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate Thanks. it. Um, yeah, I, again, I think this is one of those, those problems that seems simple. Uh, on the surface, but the more you, you look at it, the more ripe for um, some of the less scrupulous individuals, uh, say the folks that dropped two recliners out in front of the Eda 3 property this past weekend, or somebody who threw a couple mattresses off of North Washington, um, it's, a, it's a challenge. So maybe we can have uh, Keith on when he's back from vacation uh, and talk about things that we can do. Right. Thank you, Rob. Uh, right. uh, old business, remote participation policy. I think as I was saying, uh, this was Renee's um, baby for, for quite a while. I know things are opening back up. We have uh, an extension of the uh, provisions from the state to keep going with remote meetings, I think, until August 15th. So it gives us some time to figure out our, our meeting logistics. Mike has been uh, in contact with Norton Media Center as well as the library, uh, both of which have the ability to support in person and Zoom meetings simultaneously. Um, so, I'd like to open it up for a discussion on the board about how we feel about reconvening in public uh, and what the public participation uh, should look like uh, both now and in the future. And for reference, the school committee is meeting in person, um, but they are, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that they are allowing members of the public to attend in person. It is just via Zoom. That's correct, Jack. Okay. Uh, Christine, you're the first to begin it. Um, I would like to follow suit and have that we, as a select board and the town manager, um, and those directly involved with the process of the meeting would meet in person um, and then public would be virtual via Zoom only um, just as this is still an ongoing thing. Um, we're not 100% out of the woods yet, but I would like to get some sort of sense of normalcy for everybody. That's my opinion. I, I would just take it a step further. I actually would like to see it fully public um, because I think Again, we just have, I think this extends our meetings. We have challenges with with the remote technology. Um, I just, I would like to see the public, you know, be able to participate um, in person if so choose to do so. So that's my opinion. Okay. Um, Michael, I, I think it's a, I think we should get back to having meetings um, and I, Back to Meg's point, I think the public should be allowed in, and but I think if, if we don't, I think we need to absolutely make sure we have Zoom capabilities. I I think we can all agree that we never thought we would see the participation that we we've seen over the last year, and it's been great. So I would I would um, be ready to come back, and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see my ugly face, but sure I'm in <laughs> for person, I should say. But uh, I'm, I'm in. 
I'm just excited that I actually there's a there is a gavel, right? And I would have a gavel to bang. Um, so be careful what you wish for uh, when it comes to that. Uh, I I'm not a with it. He is. Um, I I am certainly um, open to the idea of meeting in person. Uh, sounds like we have venues in place. I I agree with Zoom being um, a really beneficial addition to the format of our meetings to allow for the enhanced participation. To Michael's point, um, most of the meetings that we've had previously, um, by the time we get to the end, are, are pretty pretty empty. It's just us and generally Peter, maybe one or two other people. Uh, we've had you know nearly 40 or 50 people on a, a number of our meetings. So I think that speaks to how this um, format can reach out to other folks um, in a variety of ways. So. Uh, I think as long as we are able to be in person, that's the way to go. Um, so Mike, I don't know if we need a, a vote on that or if this is just something that we can decide on our own. Um, well, if you just can let me know um, where you will be hit, where you're, you're going to have the next meeting at the library. What would your recommendation be? I, I like the library community room myself, but I leave that. I second that, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I would. I would also, though, do recommend um, that we would recommend anybody that is not vaccinated be wear masks and at the public public meeting. As I believe is, I could be wrong. I believe that is still the state guidelines. Um, it's not mandatory, but it is recommended. Okay. And perhaps if we can have uh, Chris take a look um, and make sure that we're we're still following the mandates. Uh, as applicable, but I think uh, moving our meetings to the library community room, you want to say our next meeting on the 24th, with the band-aid off and go right into it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Mike, I do have a question though, um, kind of following what Michael said about like following the state guidelines. When it, correct me if I'm wrong, when it says we can be fully capacity, full capacity, that doesn't mean like how it used to be where capacity was like 50, but like it went over that because people were standing around. Will we have like strict, if the community room is only 50 people, we make sure that it's only 50 people. Is there a way that we can enforce that? Just because I don't want us getting in trouble as a, as a public body. Christine, 50 people are not going to show up to our meeting. <laughs> hey, thank you, Meg. I was about to say, I was like, wow, we're expecting not 50 people. a chance in hell. <laughs> Sorry. But... Well, I mean, you open it to Zoom, nobody's going to come in person. Why would they come? So... That, that was one of the biggest nightmares I ever had representing a client at a planning board meeting. And the fire department showed up because the room was overloaded and shut the meeting down so yeah Again, that's not gonna happen. happen well so i actually i beg to differ i know i might be young and naive but i think with all these passionate issues that are coming up i think we could get if we get 1500 signatures for the paces i think we can get 1500 people to come to a library room or at least 50. so i just want to make sure that we're not we're not the ones getting in trouble I, I, I want to give you a hug right now. I love your passion. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Can't wait to be back in person. As I'm as going to be returning to writing my mini notes and pen and pencil and put it on Facebook at a later date. As feels going to be back to normal. Right, right, Christine in the game? Yes, Peter. Uh, I, I think to Christine's point, I think understanding the uh, fire department's capacity restrictions on that run, that, that that should be our, our guiding unit. Um, and I, I can I agree with, with Michael and Meg, the vast majority of our, of our meetings are not going to garner that much interest. However, every so often we, uh, we do get involved in a very hot topic, whether it's the pieces or uh, Bay Road Solar was another big one where there's a lot of people that are going to go on to come in and, and have their voices heard, which um, they should, and it, that's great to see. Um, so make sure we can we can manage that. So, um, so Mike, if you can reach out to Norton Media and the library and oh, make sure that we're all set to go for the 24th, um, yeah. maybe we can try to get there 
a little bit early to make sure that we can do a couple of dry runs on the technology uh, so we don't embarrass ourselves once the meeting gets going and not understand how to work it. Great. All right. Thanks for that. Just lost my page. Your page. The discussion on select board meeting format and communications. To be honest, I do not remember what this one was about. I, I put this on a while ago. Again, we can defer it, but, cause, but this is the problem that we're running into these three, four hour Zoom meetings. Um, we have an executive session after this. So um, just real quick, and this is something we can table for a later discussion, but I would recommend maybe if we are going back in person, maybe a starting point is that we figure out that we, that we as a select board maybe get there half hour early so we can read through everything because the problem is we're just all so busy during the week and then all of a sudden we're trying to read through tips as we're as we're trying to vote on them but if maybe we can come up with a better format um and i think we certainly should talk to the finance committee i again i, I watch their their meetings are just like clockwork um and they have a lot of ground to cover as well so i'm not sure where we get caught in the weeds but um i definitely think we could um, improve our, our meeting skills to lessen the burden. And I'm not, I'm not sure exactly all that, but I would like to at a later time, we could talk about this. Um, I'm, I'm fine having that conversation now. I think it's an important one. I think we all feel the pain of, of some of these uh, four, four and a half, and we had a five hour meeting. Um, like that's, that's a lot, especially when you add in the joint meetings with FinCom and the school committee. Right. It, 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 it adds up pretty quickly and, you know, on, also from a public side, it, it makes the meetings a bit more inaccessible when people aren't going to want to carve out three plus hours to sit and, and, and go through. Obviously, but meeting, if there's meeting. anything that we can do in terms of, um, I don't know, short, again, keep, maybe we, we make it, we limit our agenda items. Um, if there's another way, like, I'm not sure, can announcements go as part of um, just a posting? Um, I'm not sure. Could we have something that just goes up that they're recorded? So I don't know. I, I'm just, there's got to be a way that we, we can streamline how we do business. Certainly open to suggestions. I see Christine, you have your hand up. Um, Meg, I just want to reiterate one of the things that you have said on many meetings, we are new. And I think that is a huge part of it. A lot like you're new, I'm new, Michael's kind of new, Jack and Renee are our, are our veterans here. Um, and it, but they're, but they, you guys are really been here for like two plus years. Um, so I think versus income, which has, you know, I think all of our combined years, um, just one person might have all of them. Um, so I think that that's a huge part of it. Um, so I think maybe learning and growing and I won't ramble as much and will, you know, try, try to condense things better. Um, me personally, I read all the stuff before the meeting. That's why I had my questions written down. Um, so I was ready for it. I don't have kids though, and I work from home. So at, I'm in a completely different boat. I'm not commuting. Um, yeah, no, so it's that, just, so it's just. Yeah, it's completely, it's just, you know, again, I think everyone needs to remember we're volunteers and I want to do the best I can. But um, when we had those marathon meetings, I mean, it was absolutely insane. You know, like I'm literally like, or I'm trying to do some work for work tonight after this and, um, you know, be out the door at first thing. So I just think, I, I don't think it's a, I don't think this is a heavy lift. I think we can, um, Again, I, I think we just have to maybe we limit the agenda items and you know again when you're trying to get it down, I think we we set a, a time where we try and really like be mindful of that time frame. So whether it's an hour and a half um, every other week. And if we have special items, then we can you know certainly account for that. But um, I, I just I, I've never seen meetings go as long as do on the select board. Um, and I think it's a, sort of the nature of it, right? Like we're all like have opinions and we're sort of talking and um, I'm hoping to be honest and part of the, you know, selfishly being in person, I'm hoping that that will um, also maybe help alleviate where we're actually, you know, sitting next to one another and actually can have a conversation versus I feel like the Zoom thing is just sort of, you know, 
might as well all be in Timbuktu. Um, but I think I think starting with maybe just seeing how we can do, see what we can do in an hour and a half and really be mindful of our agenda items. And anything that can be done offline is done offline. I don't, you know, and I'm not sure what that is. Like I said, even the announcements, I think there could be a simple way that we could publicly announce things without um, taking, you know, 25 minutes of the select board meeting to make announcements. I, I just think, and I get it, there's announcements need to be made, but maybe there's a better way to do it than at this meeting. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, a couple things that uh, you know that have helped me. Um, I'm, I'm I'm very hesitant to limit the the, the agenda, and, and, I, and I say that cautiously, guys. I, I get it. Four hour meetings, five hour meetings are painful. I get that, but we, we are doing. Uh, it sounds like a bad cliche of people's work here, right? And there are sometimes there are debates, and there's sometimes this. What I try to do is I do try to touch base with, with Jen and Mike during the week to find out if I have questions, I try to ask them, Mike, Mike units, I should say, I try to ask them about some things that I see on the agenda and so forth. That might also help there. We do get the packets. I know the agenda comes out on Tuesday. We get the packets all over Wednesday and sometimes updated on Thursday. So I think that would, would do this. I'm just very, very, some of the debates that we have are good debates. I know it's long, you know, but it's, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be meeting every week. I'd rather, I'd rather take all of Thursday night and meet every other week. I, I don't, I, I like having one Thursday free personally. I and mean, we know that oh, I agree. during oh, budget, no, I, during yeah, budget no, no, time, no. we know that's not possible. I agree. And I kept thinking like, okay, as soon as we get through town meeting, then this is going to get better. And it hasn't. So I'm like, well, it has to stop somewhere. Like we literally were doing 15 hours of meetings a week up until town meeting and then yeah. town meeting happened and then we're still doing <laughs> more meetings. So I just think, and I, I talked to, I have two friends that are on the select board in Foxborough and they were like, are you kidding me? Like <laughs> we're, we bang these meetings out. So I don't know. And again, I don't know the open, if we can have a, just a conversation, I'm happy to like put us all in touch and sort of say best practices on how to run a town hall, you know, a select board meeting. Um, but I, again, we just, we got to find a more efficient way. I, I just don't think this is, and I'm, I'm all about debating. That's fine. But I think we get caught up in more than just debating and it's uh, just my opinion. Yep, I, uh, I agree. Quality of life is, uh, is good. My, uh, yes. uh, my wife would very much like that these meetings don't run until 11 o'clock at night, um, as, as I'm sure we all would. Um, so yeah, let, I'm certainly open to ideas on things we can do. I'm happy I, to put something together for everyone to react to. I can put some thoughts down and sort of streamline it. I, I've already talked to the finance committee chair and um, he said he'd be happy to, you know, sort of give some, some guidance as well. Um, so if you want, I will, I will put something together for everyone to react to and give some more, more thought to this. Okay. Uh, something I'm passionate you. about. <laughs> Shorting our meetings for God's sakes. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you were going to say something? I, I was just going to say and the same thing Michael did. Um, it seems a lot of times if you ask the questions in advance, we can have the information for you at the meeting rather than ask a question at a meeting and then it's got to delay it to another meeting so we can get you the information that you're looking for. So uh, I think it's helpful if you reach out um, during the week with questions on it. And also, uh, limiting the agenda and um but we do we like tonight's agenda is not that much <laughs> really it just uh just something well, but, but there are some hot topics on it tonight so i knew that was going to go off it but yep and, and part of it is probably my my meeting style right i i um there were past members of the board that were very brief and to the point like nope there's no discussion we're moving on that's that's not my personal style. I, I think everyone has come here, they, they want to share. So I know that adds some time to it. Um, it's my personal philosophy on, on, on what we should be doing for the public and for ourselves. Uh, and I do agree that sometimes that goes on probably a bit longer than it needs to. So I will try to, uh, to rein that in a little bit. And then, yeah, uh, definitely open to tightening things up a little bit. 
Um, I just have a question or well, not a question. Okay. Um, in, in direction to asking questions before the meeting, the reason why I save my questions for the meeting is because I'm showing the public that I care and that there are questions that they might have and that they, they can't ask it like the tips, how many vehicles, what kinds of vehicles, will there be an entry? Um, like those things that I want spoken and I want her heard and on the record. So that's, I only save those questions so that other people who aren't, you know, members of the select board can hear that. Um, that that's my personal opinion. I, I, I agree. I think that's, that, that's key, right? We ask questions that people may have or that we think that people might have. Um, if I'm interpreting from, from Michael and Mike, if we let them know what those questions are ahead of time, they can have those answers so that they can be available that night as opposed to continuing on. Uh, I wouldn't change anything about your approach, Christine. I think I, I agree. That's I think that's why we're here. We're to be sort of that of that voice that asks those questions. Super. Anything else on this? All right. Let's move on. Uh, we're on to the town manager's report. Uh, okay. Mike, you've got four items, and uh, I'm going to pull Meg and say, work quickly, please. All right. Well, before I bring those up, um, uh, if I can bring up a sore subject, uh, I was just checking um, the rules under parliamentary procedure, and it appears that the vote you took previously would be a fail. Um, so the hypothetical they give here, you have a, say you have a three member board and, uh, two people vote yes, one votes no, two abstain, that's a fail. If, uh, you have two vote, two vote yes, one vote no, two absent, that's a fail. It's, so, no, no, I, I was thought that vote was a fail. The, the Pays's withdrawal was a fail. It okay. was one yes, one no, and two abstentions yeah. on a four things. It would okay. not pass. I just wanted to make sure. No, Mike, Mike, I voted yes. That was two yeses. Two yeses. Oh, it was vote two yeses. Yeah, two but yes. now Mike is saying that two yeses and a, a, two abstain. I, I apologize. I didn't, I didn't know you. I thought you abstained. I apologize, Mike. Mike, I would check. Yeah, I, I'll definitely check on it. Um, yeah, I think you're. If we have two yeses, that's a that's a withdrawal. That means it passed. Because you you basically have to because you 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 because Renee's not here, her vote doesn't get. She doesn't get like an abstention. It isn't that. It just doesn't happen. So then you have to go by simple majority. Right. So you only had two out of four. So you don't have a majority. You'd need three. But the but the abstention would would the abstention would not go to that count. Like I'm almost positive on that one. Well, I, I, I apologize. I I misunderstood. Yeah, that. No, I I'll check on that's it. That's a big difference. I'll yeah. check on it and let you know. But according to this, that that wouldn't be the case. But I'll let you know. All right. Well, if we can get some some clarity on that, I think that that's yep. that's obviously. Well, we would a, have to let them know that we're on this call because they went away thinking that it passed. Yeah. I was about to ask for that. Did you publish? this if you have to give a different answer than they left thinking they got yep okay. all right um town manager's report under the uh first item american rescue plan so under the uh american rescue plan uh norton's allotment will be two million eighty seven thousand nine hundred and twenty eight dollars and I gave you the sheet on that. Also, um, they calculated a, a possible county uh, amount to the town, 3,874,665. Um, right now, the county commissioners haven't committed that they're going to give money to the towns out of their allotment. I did attend their uh, county commissioners meeting with the town manager from Mansfield and the town administrator from Easton last week, just to let them know that we would have interest in obtaining some of those funds. Um, but uh, they haven't taken a vote on what they're gonna do with their allotment yet. The county's getting, uh, I believe $109 million directly. 
So I'll let you know how that plays out. And uh, we're still reviewing the parameters on what we can use the money for, uh, but we would expect to uh, receive 50% um, of the money in June and the other 50% in 2022. And we have till 2026 to spend the money. So, um, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, on that, um, uh, Mike, you and I have been asked to meet with uh, the head of the Council on Aging um, after the PBC meeting on Monday to answer a couple of their questions on both the CARES Act and the American Rescue Plan to try to help with communication and to how that can impact some residents. Um, just lock in with me again earlier today if you happen to be available. You can set something up. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, just some updates on employees. Unfortunately, uh, Catherine Van Dyne will be leaving. Uh, she's retiring in September, the treasurer. So uh, we have advertised for our treasurer collector. Um, and uh, last week, Donna Palmer, the public health nurse, came in and uh, said she's retiring uh, in July. Both of them are moving out of state. They're relocating, and uh, we're going to miss them both. Uh, we're completing interviews uh, for the position, uh, the clerical position in the planning department. Paul and I have interviewed a number of people for that and hope to have a uh, appointment uh, recommendation come to your meeting on the 24th. Uh, we've advertised for the clerical position in the veterans office and we're also uh, preparing an ad for a recording secretary. Um, the finance committee recording secretary um, doesn't want to uh, continue in the position so we're going to be looking for a recording secretary also. So. I wish uh, Catherine and Donna all the best in their retirements. Has, uh, has Chris stopped crying since he found out that Donna was going to leave? <laughs> you, you know, you've got that right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So we'll miss them both. Um, on the Rail Chair Out project, uh, Chris Keyes and myself met with the uh, engineer last week to review. Uh, the plans before uh, we put our packages together this week, just to let you know that we'll be sending out uh, roughly 60 packages to uh, residents along the trail uh, that we'll be looking to seek donations from them initially <clears throat> for easements or any takings that need to be done along the trail. Uh, so if you do have a contact from somebody, uh, that's that's what that is about um, and they should contact us and we can sit down with them um, with the plans and go over anything they want um, after the we seek the donations if we're not successful then later on once the 75 percent design is approved we'd have to uh, have properties appraised and uh, go back with offers for people on their property <coughs> Um, and then the building project, uh, we are finishing up on the uh, owner's project manager request for services. The building committee reviewed that, and rather than have two, they're looking to just have one RFS. So we're incorporating everything into one, and we we'll, should have that out to the central register uh, either tomorrow or the beginning of next week. Has that been reviewed by the, the PVC yet? I know they've um, provided some comments on the RFP. Yeah, they they sent me comments uh, that they want incorporated and they want it all as one. Okay. Does it need to go through them? I think, like they said, they're meeting on Monday. Do they need one last look at it before yep. it goes out? Yep. And uh, just to let you know, Xfinity Center will be starting up July 10th. It will be the first uh, concert. Luke Bryan will be there on uh, July 10th. All right. That was going to be part of my uh, my report and mail question, so I'll jump on this now. Um, it seems every year we get 
hot flat footed when it comes to mitigating traffic and some of the, the issues that go on there. Um, I understand that the longtime manager of Xfinity has moved on. There's somebody new who may not be as well versed in some of the uh, complications that surround. So are we in a good spot with the relationship with this new individual and with uh, police details and shutting down reservoir to um, non-resident traffic? Try to I, had a, uh, I had a Zoom meeting with him today and his uh, public safety, his, his uh, public safety person the police chief, the deputy chief, and the lieutenant. Um, so they went over all their issues, concerns, um, and uh, what they'll need for details for different concerts. And they're can, can I just say they don't, they don't allow re Norton residents, and no one can make a left going um, down reservoir. It's a huge problem when Knight said you work late when you're like, oh crap, there's a concert. You can't get down your street. So I, I, I get that there's, I, I don't know how you would do that. I guess you can't be checking IDs and you don't want to, um, I don't know. I just, I, I would like someone to sort of just address it though. There's got to be a way, um, if there is even a sign that says only Norton residents, I mean, only reservoir residents or something or residents only, and they could have a police detail there and nobody's going to, you know, the few that go down that aren't residents, whatever, but um, I don't know, just something that's always been an issue. I usually get the concert schedule and I have to put it in my calendar so I know, like, do not go home that night late because you're screwed. We'll let you know when Buffett's coming. Oh my God, I, I'll just take off from work. I'm not even going <laughs> But there was a huge issue and, and it was ways, um, if you remember my. Um, yep. That one year, I literally was at Michael's over in Nanceville Crossing. It took me an hour and a half to get to my house on Reservoir Street because all the ways brought them all around and they were coming up Reservoir. I mean, I know that was a one-time thing and everybody complained it was a nightmare, but if there's a new manager there, just make sure they're aware of the traffic problems. Okay. And uh, I know there's been concerts where there have been uh, people walking down the street um, with public urination and public drinking. Right, and beer cans on your yard, it's awesome. Uh, exactly. Um, so whatever we can do. If we were getting tax dollars from, from Nanceville, I'd be fine with it, but like we're not, so we're, we're just getting all the trash. Yeah. Uh, so Tori, I, uh, I know this is an issue that uh, yeah, you're passionate about. Um, yeah, how are we doing again? Uh, so they do block off the end of the road because this young, young lady, she must live right down the street from me or something, but they got that new hotel that went up down the end of that road. I was told that they're going to block it off coming into Reservoir Street at the entrance of that uh, the new hotel. Whether that be true or not, I don't know. I don't know how they would ever swing that. To me, that would be a traffic nightmare coming in and out of that hotel. Um, the other thing is, is I don't know if it's Mr. Units that speaks with them up there himself, but uh, when Jeff Mann was up there, he had a meeting with Norton residents. He actually invited us all up there, and we all went up there and spoke. Uh, I'd rather, you know, let whoever needs to be in charge of it take care of this, but there was an email list that Jeff Mann had, and every week there would be an email that came out on Tuesdays from him and that told everybody that was able to or knew about it, that joined on to it, you had a list of exactly what was going on, what time the shows were starting, what time the shows were going to be over. You knew what time the road closures were going to happen before, after, during, or anything like that. I don't know if there's a way to possibly access that again with this new guy, if you'll be willing to do that. Did it go away? I was also told that there was a young lady named Sarah that uh, was working under Jeff Mann before that handled this email things for him before. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to speak to them or to her directly and have that started back up again and then possibly be able to, I don't know, it seems like Norton Navy seems to be the way to go for folks around here to, to spread the word and see if we can get on an email list so that way 
You know, some of us don't pay attention to actually who's playing this weekend, but at least you'll have that information to know what time to stay away from what area. Yeah, Tori, I was on that list. It was awesome. So I yeah, knew I could play my week because I'm not going to always remember to go online, but it was awesome. Yeah. I'll check with him to see if he has that. Tori, and if not, that's maybe so get fun. one started up. Tori, yeah. that's so funny because I was just thinking about that the other day. I was actually going to message Rob, who, like, I know is one of the, the moderators in our neighbors, and see if, because I know he does, like, weekly things. I was going to see if he had one of those. Like a post, because I, uh, I just moved back to the. Rob time. is on. Rob is on. What do you want? Rob? Rob is on. What do you want? <laughs> is there? Because I like how you do the like yard sale posts or, or the Wednesday wows. Is there a way you could do like a weekly concert update? I could. Yeah, I schedule these. Um, just so you guys know, I don't actually live on Facebook as much as the automation that I use makes it look like I do. Um, <laughs> I've gotten adept at using it. Um, I, I schedule those. I mean, we can certainly set something up and have it drop at a certain time. I agree, though. Why I like not just Why don't you contact Facebook. me offline? Because I that the purpose of that group, seriously, you know, all, all kidding aside, is to help the community with information. No, and no, no. Things. It's exactly this sort of thing. So, and I agree. I think it's a good group for that. And I think this was like, like I said, I was I was just thinking about that yesterday. I was going to message you when concerts started because I know they're starting soon, and I was going to see if you did like a weekly. You know, concert announcement list so people can be aware because yeah, contact me. Let's take this offline because I don't want to take the select this meeting. But the answer, the short answer is yeah, we can. You got it, Rob. Okay. And for it, uh, I think Meg's point about not just doing it on Facebook, perhaps we can leverage Morton Alerts once a week with upcoming concert dates. And please be aware that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, the following concerts are beginning at 7 p.m. Please prepare for additional traffic. I recommend you, you do you do learn the alerts and then you have that shared on to North neighbors. Yep. It's the best way. I, I pick up a lot of North alerts and move them over when I see them. Also, my theater channel can and that's to take to the concerts and right? And we've got a lot of options. Feeling good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. Uh, all right. Uh, Mike, anything else on your Tom manager report? No, nope, all set. All righty. Uh, select board report and mail. Uh, what's up, gang? Anything to share today? You all good? I'll talk to you. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yep. I just wanted to give a, a huge thanks to um, uh, Congressman Oshenkloss and State Senator Paul Feeney. Uh, the last week they came down and uh, visited the um, the well projects that we have going on with well four and five, uh, the water treatment facility, and also the property on Elm Street, um, specifically on the wells. Um, Congressman Oshkos is proposing some appropriations, federal appropriations for that, and hopefully, if that comes through, that will assist the town on on the development and improvement of those wells. And I'm sorry, Mike, it was myself and Mike units, um, and um, and Paul G. Giuseppe and um, Nick Iafredi that were there as well. So I just want to, Mike, I'll pass this off to you just to follow up on just uh, my comments. I, I just wanted to uh, give a thank you uh, to Derek Sertoli. He did a great job uh, explaining to the congressman uh, the process of how the wells work and how the treatment plant works. Uh, the congressman was very interested, knew what questions to ask, and uh, Derek did a great job. Uh, Amazing, yeah explaining all that to him from the water department. I've known Derek for a long time. I mean, I was really blown away by Derek's presentation to the congressman. So I mean, my hat's off. The, um, I think one of the things that we should do is, uh, I think we should be doing a video um, of the new water treatment facility. It really is a, uh, it's an impressive facility um, that's, that's up and running now. Yeah, if you have a chance sometime to go and take a tour, um, it's the first time I've been in there because once COVID hit, um, everything was shut down because they couldn't risk having, having people in there. And uh, so uh, if you get a chance, uh, you really should reach out and take a tour of it. 
So, uh, and one last thing, Mr. Chairman, um, just to follow up on uh, the town manager's uh, statement, I really, before this meeting ends, would love to get just a direction on understanding of who we're going to ask regarding the Robert's rules, because I've also just kind of been referencing Robert's rules from the uh, Massachusetts Municipal Society um, Association, I apologize, and it, it, on a five-person board, it's my understanding, with two yeses, uh, one no, and an extension, that is a simple majority. So um, I see that, that that the motion would have passed, not failed. Um, so I just would like to get an understanding before we get off this call, what, who and who will be, who will be asking to get that determination. Michael, can we also ask for a timeline on the determination? Not just who'll be asking. And it's a great question. It's a great, it's a great this question. vote has to be done again. When does the vote happen again? The, the vote wouldn't happen again. It's it, the vote already happened, and the yeah. question is: it either passed or it fails. That's the vote already happened. Okay. Because so, you know, this is a this is a case. And let me just give you public perception and all this uneducated people out here, where they've twice been given an answer by the courts and haven't wanted to accept it and just keep trying to find a way to keep trying to get the answer they want. It, it's felt like a win by attrition here. Now this vote went down. People are, left this call and they're going to suddenly hear it about. Oh no! Guess what? No, they they later the call came up with some loophole to say no, you didn't get your vote. And it's going to get interpreted that way. As a matter of fact, I'll say point blank. To me, it kind of looks that way. I got a sense just now that there has been an offline conversation. About what can we do about that vote? So um, that's that's completely inappropriate, Rob. I mean, come on. Okay, but Jack, it, it's going to play that way, and you need to address that. Whether you like the optics of it or not, those are going to be your optics because this is what's going on. The optics will be the optics. If if Mike is finding information. We're committed to, to finding out. I, I thought it passed. If it hasn't passed, then that's going to be important to know. Um, it, it's going to be what it's going to be. No one is sitting here pulling strings to try to change the outcome of, of a vote that was made. And okay. I will say again that this motion could be made again when we have a full, okay. full five member board back, board back. Appropriate or not, it felt that way. But, but Jack, but Jack You're gonna have, that's what I mean about optics. But Jack, you have to live with that when you play when things go by that way. That's the nature of the game. Go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry. Jack. Michael. The vote has happened. So the vote either passed or failed. It's not it's it's not a revote situation. It's and I apologize. It trust me, I was in the impression it failed because I thought I just Meg's my on the static thing, I thought Meg voted no. So I I or they a mega abstained, I thought. Um, so the vote happened to this, this it, it's not really a re-vote situation, it's a determination of the motion that was 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 placed. Yeah. I mean, so that's we'll have that. And a lot of us feel like we heard Mr. Welsh, yes. Mr. Welsh, I, I, I appreciate you, but it, right now with this discussion with the, with the town manager and, and I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I should uh, this is this is just touching a source a sore spot. That, that continues to go on is where people assume the worst and assume that people are working to undermine processes. And that, that irks me because every single person that has been involved with this is volunteering their personal time to try to better the town. No one is sitting here trying to think, how can I screw this town up? That's maybe oh, somebody, nobody's I'm thinking not that. Aware. Nobody's thinking that, but I did get an impression, Jack, that somebody's going, oh, God, we just didn't get the decision we wanted. What do we do about it? I, I mean, that's... I, I, okay, I can't, and you can, I can't disagree, disagree, you can can disagree with me, but I'm entitled to feel like that's what, well, it's, how it's, that it's, felt. It's this wild conjecture that spreads and just really undermines okay. the, a lot of the work that the board is trying to do. So if that's, that's how it felt, I, I'm not going to, to do that. Um, that's how it felt, Jack. That that's the, having things go down that way. It's called appearance of impropriety. We are all beholden to it. I work in the financial things. I'm very familiar with it, and we are at, we're very beholden to it. In my own career field. So, so if you're gonna allow it, you gotta live with its consequences. So I'm I'm not harmed from anything. But if we're trying to, uh, if if there is somebody here that is trying to pull strings behind the scenes, doing it in the in the exact same meeting where the meeting, uh, where I didn't the say pull strings. I, I mean, you're you're making implications that people here are trying to. I did not say pull strings. 
I don't care. I said that same drop. You are making implications that people here are you said all the outcome. I don't. I said offline conversation, Jack. Rob, you're putting the rest of those words in my mouth. Rob, yes, we're done with this conversation. Offline conversations. All I said, you're putting words in my mouth. You are making implications that people are working behind the scenes to. I have said an appearance of impropriety. And yes, I do have see an appearance and you're going to have to live with the fact that's an appearance and the appearance of impropriety is what it is. You do not like it, but it is what it is. And it's present here. Well, I'm pushing back on this case because we're trying to share information as we understand it, as we get it publicly, transparently in the meeting where it was discussed. So we're moving on from this part. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Mike, to that point, when can you get a concrete answer as to whether or not this vote passed? Or uh, it's, a, it's a simple call in the morning. I'll call council and have the answer. So, so please let me know as soon as that's done, and I will show you the outcome of that. And if this were to come back up at our next meeting to get a, a vote, assuming when it is back on the 24th, uh, would that be a new motion with the same language, or would that need to be a reconsideration? Do we get that clarification as well? I will. Right. Thank you very much. Anything else on report and mail? Very good. Uh, moving on. I have approved payroll warrant PR 21-25 for the week ended May 29th, 2021. Warrant dated June 3, 2021. In the amount of one million six hundred ninety-eight thousand three hundred forty-six dollars and sixty-four cents, invoice warrant AP twenty-one dash forty-nine, dated June third, twenty twenty-one, in the amount of one million sixty-six thousand thirty-six dollars and ninety-eight cents, and invoice warrant AP twenty-one dash fifty, dated June tenth, twenty twenty-one, in the amount of four hundred seventy-nine thousand eight hundred two dollars and nine cents. Which brings us to our minutes. Uh, January 22nd, I think is still with Renee for review. Uh, review. Um, is, has anyone, everyone had a chance to review the April minutes? Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, just, just for clarification, um, we had a couple of different executive sessions and there are, none of these executive sessions are the Negotiations, the town manager negotiations, correct? Um, I don't believe I, just, I know we did double executive sessions. I just want to make sure it's very clear and I would really want to identify what we're approving and what we're not approving. I just don't want to say we're approving that, but I want to make sure that the executive, the uh, litigate. That's, um, yeah. that's, a, that's a good point. The executive session one versus ex executive session two. So why don't we put the executive session minutes aside? For this, um, so I would entertain a motion to approve the following minutes: uh, April fourteenth, twenty twenty-one; April fifteenth, twenty twenty-one, open session; April twenty-sixth, twenty twenty-one; April twenty-ninth, twenty twenty-one. So moved. Okay, second. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Meg. Yes. Christine. Yes. Michael. Aye. I too and a yes. Uh, how about May? You want to go through those? I'm all set with all of them, and I believe the executive sessions are the notes written by Jen, not the ones that I wrote exclusively the select board. If if that's my understanding. Yeah, I think one of the things that we have to do, Christine, is. On our agenda, I, we're approving here on our agenda. I would rather leave and not vote on them and do executive session one, executive session two, if there are any overlaps there, just to, for clarification purposes for as we approve uh, both executive sessions later on. You, do you guys know? Do you know what I mean, Christine? Or I, I think yeah. I think instead of just doing like one or two, maybe say like exclusive select board, or then do like exclusive select board with town manager. I don't know that one and two would, would confuse yeah. me personally, but it, it in my opinion doesn't matter. It's fine. Yeah. I think, I, I think we should keep the executive sessions separate for now until we can get some clarity and make sure that we know exactly what we're, uh, we're approving. 
Um, so, Chair, is there any motion to approve the following minutes? Uh, May 13, 2021, open session. May 18, 2021. May 27, 2021, open session. Second. Second. Motion and second. Meg? Uh, Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. I two and yes. All right. Uh, our next meeting, as discussed, is going to be in person at the library on uh, Thursday, 24th. June twenty fourth. Yes, very exciting. Uh, a long time coming. Gonna be there. All right. Uh, is there any other business to come before the board before we recess into executive session? Now comes my favorite point where I need to try to find the language that Jen sent me that I can never ever find when the time comes. I think for this executive session, is this what Renee always says you don't need the motion for? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I believe it is, but that's not right. that's why I don't know. Okay, I'm just trying to find the language. <laughs> For the record, people like me can still hear you if you don't want that. No, we haven't gone into executive session yet. Oh, okay. Just to let you know. No, this is still open. Um, That's fine. There's a specific motion that we um, we need to make. Uh, I have a new one. I scroll through my email to find that. Do you know the last time that we used that language, Jen? I think it was May 24th. Do you want me to? Well, if, I think for this topic, we don't usually prepare one. I can give you one from our last executive session so you can just insert what the topic's for if that's easy enough. Okay, sure. Okay. If you want, if you're able to share it on the screen, maybe you can just read it from there. Now you're challenging me. I've never shared my screen before. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, here we go. Uh, I found Renee's note. So no declaration to go into the executive session is needed. So we'll take Renee's word for it. Uh, so Chair, move that we enter into executive session to conduct negotiations with non-union personnel, i.e. town manager pursuant to GL Chapter 30A, Section 21, Little A2, uh, and to discuss strategy with respect to negotiations with non-union personnel, i.e. town manager pursuant to General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Little A2. Motion and second. Meg. Uh, and the board will not return to open session at the conclusion of that. So, so Meg. Uh, Christine? Yes. Michael? Aye. Aye, two MES. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time tonight. Good night, everyone.